Chapter 40 Way Back, 3, You Are Listening at NovelFull.Audio Way Back, 3 So what brings you guys here? I cringed at the sight that greeted me as I entered the building. I had hoped that my senses had somehow picked up wrong presences, but of course, they hadn't. Tang Soyol who was carefully eating her meal turned into a statue upon seeing me. While Nan Gung Bai Dot Ah simply continued to eat with a dumb face, pretending that she hadn't noticed me. Then there was Y C Old Dot Ah who just naturally moved to sit next to them, and started eating as well. Okay okay, understandable. I could understand why Seol Dada's actions. I could also, to an extent, understand Namgung by Dada's actions, as I was used to her taking unexpected albeit irritating actions. However, Tang Soyol. Why is she here? She even seemed to be avoiding eye contact with me. Lady Tang. Why dot yes, all I did was call her name, so what is she so startled for? What brings you here? I. I just happened to coincidentally pass by. Coincidentally. What were the odds that the lady of the Tang clan, who never traveled outside of her clan, would suddenly choose to step out of her clan and then end up here with everyone? Plus, I had only just arrived. I asked Tang Soil just in case. Were you waiting for me? And dot and oh, what reasons would I have for me to wait for you? She was denying it even with her hands, and I agreed, feeling like there was no other possible answer. You're right, but then I wonder why you are here. Tang Soil became silent at this point, as she didn't have another excuse. Why are they acting like this? I never was able to understand Tang Soil even in my previous life. Maybe she has a crush on me. I quickly put that thought away as soon as it came up. Unlike Gu Jiliub and Namgung Chanjin, I didn't have a face that would set me up for life. Not to mention, I don't think I was Tang Soyol's type. And in the off chance, even if she did have a crush on me, I suddenly recalled a memory of her torturing someone with a small poisonous nail, the size of a pinky nail. I hadn't been directly tortured by her, but I remembered Tang Soyol's expression during it. It was too much for me to handle. Yeah, she definitely came here for some sort of business. I hoped that she would be done with it already and leave soon. I turned my attention to the crazy bitch from the Namgung clan after speaking to Tang Soyol. Lady Namgung. What brings you here? Hmm. Hmm. Why is she making that face? Namgung by Dada's face was telling me, why are you asking such an obvious question? I hoped that I had read it wrong. Farewell, pardon. As always, Namgung by Dada's brief response irritated me. It was the same right now. What does she mean by farewell? Does she want to say, bye, or something? Or was it code word for hunting humans just like in my previous life? In my eyes, Namgung by Dada still fit the image of a woman who hunted humans. Of course, I was trying my best to look at her differently. Which was why I am asking her again. Farewell. I, never said bye. Oh, uh, I'm also here because of that. Tang Soil quickly chipped in after Namgung by Dada's response. Oh, I see, so they are here because they never bid me farewell huh? But. Why? I explained my situation to the Tang clan's young lord, you didn't hear about it. I did. Tang Soyol responded with a faint voice while Namgung by Dot A continued to stare at me, the look on her face telling me that she thought there was nothing wrong with it. Yeah, I don't see this as a big problem. I guess I didn't have to look for any ill intents from them since everything had gone well. In the end, they were just here because they couldn't give me a farewell. Right, good things are good things. I was also admittedly being rude to the people that came here because they couldn't give me a farewell. But I didn't want to involve myself with these crazy women. I couldn't emphasize that enough. Thank you for coming all the way here. It was good to see you all, and I hope you have a great rest of your lives. I answered back with the utmost respect, 
hoping that they would accept it and leave right away. They didn't. Instead, both their faces showed strange expressions as they looked at me. I guess that wasn't the reply they wanted. But then, what exactly did they want from me? I put that thought aside and asked Namgung by Dot Ah. Something had been bothering me since the moment I noticed her presence, Lady Namgung. Hmm, why are you still here even after the military exhibition of Tang Clan has ended? What about the other people from your clan? Chanjin said he had something to do, he said he was waiting for someone. Nangung Chanjin has something to do in Sichuan. I mean, I guess I shouldn't be surprised. Even I had something to do here, so I guess he must have had his own objectives. What I was surprised about was something else. But he allowed you to just come here. He didn't even follow you. It was very surprising to see Namgung by Dot Ah here all by herself without Namgung Chanjin following her. Hmm. He allowed it, he said that you wouldn't be here anyways, allowed her. I thought a maniac like him would never allow her to come here, so it was shocking for me to hear that he had personally granted her permission. And he even said he wouldn't come. What did he mean by that? But, Lady Namgung. Did you forget about the deal we made last time? Hmm. We made a deal of her leaving me alone in exchange for telling her my real name. I didn't. Namgung by Dot A confidently replied, seemingly proud that she remembered the deal. But, if you do remember, why are you still here? Then why are you still here? Why? You said you wouldn't annoy me. I never annoyed you. Oh. For fuck's sake. Namgung by Dada genuinely didn't seem to realize that her being here was enough to annoy me. I guess it's my fault for not being specific during our deal. I'm really retarded for not specifying such a key detail. But what about speaking formally to me then? Namgung by Dada paused at my comment, then spoke after rolling her eyes. Young master. Should I punch her? I really considered this thought. At this point, Nangung by Dot Ah was practically pulling her sword out and challenging me to a fight. I always got a headache whenever I talked to her. How did I manage to deal with her in my previous life? Oh yeah. I just never spoke to her. How clever I was. I think that was the answer. While I was massaging my temple because of my headache, Tang Soyol, who had been quietly listening all this time, visibly hesitated. Dot it looked like she wanted to say something, but I didn't care enough to ask her about it. She would probably say it anyways if I just pretended not to notice her. You dot um as I expected, Tang Soyol spoke to me hesitantly. Yes. If you return to your clan. H dot how long will it be till you come back to Sichuan? I'm not sure. Would I ever return all the way here? I mean, I probably would, but I don't think it's any time soon. It would probably be at least a few years. I told Tang Soyo my answer. T that that's not good. That's too long. Tang Soyo visibly argued with her own thoughts for a few seconds after hearing my response. Eventually, she seemed to have arrived at a conclusion and said. Do you, have any poison you like? Pardon. Or, what about some dagger art? Dagger art. Did I hear wrong? I swear she just said poison. Tang Soyol seemed stunned upon seeing my reaction. I did I knew this wasn't it. Brother said this would work though, Lady Tang. Are you feeling sick? It looked like she was having a headache. A severe one at that. At this moment, a hand that was targeting the dumplings between us broke the awkward exchange as it snuck forward. I slapped the hand right away, causing the owner to yell. I didn't even have to check who it was. Are you done with yours? Yeah. Why seal Dada answered while rubbing her hand. Then just order another dish. Why are you always targeting mine? I let out a sigh and pushed a dish of dumplings towards Yseol. Ah. I didn't mind, as I didn't have a good appetite. Yseol. Ah happily started to enjoy more dumplings. 
Then from the side, Nan gun by dot os chopsticks aimed for the dumplings, which I stopped right away. Please order another dish, don't take others. Nan gun by dot os stares at me with a dumb face. It looked like her pupils came alive again once I started looking at her. I, have a question, sir. You're speaking formally to me. That. What happened? The direction Namgung by Dada slowly pointed to was my lower abdomen. Namgung by Dada, just like Muyin, noticed the change in me. Tang Soil didn't really seem to care about such things, but Namgung by Dada was different. I had something come up. That was the best response I could think of. Even if I tell her that I found the Golden Nature's hidden secret treasure, and the giant snake that gave me the power. Ichem. She might actually believe me. I felt like she would be one of the few people who would believe my tale, but there was no point in telling her. Nangung by Dot Ah simply nodded her head at my response. Then her eyes lit up. That was not a good sign at all. There was usually only one follow dot up when Nangung by Dada showed such a reaction. Then what about a duel? I refuse. Nangung by Dada's eyes widened following my instant rejection. No way. That was a rare moment for Nangung by Dada speaking out loud. What is she even doing? Why is she suddenly challenging me to a duel when she usually only bothered sword? Wielders. I really don't like this attention. I've already used up much of my time, so I can't stay here much longer. Therefore, I cannot have a duel with you. After saying that, I felt Muyin staring at me with a grudge from behind me. Yeah, I know it's my fault that we are late, please stop looking at me like that. Ahem. I let out a fake cough and stood up. Now that I had finished eating, I had to start moving before sunset. It took a long time to come here, so it would be another long trip on the way back. Just the thought of it made me bored. Just as I was about to leave, Tang Soyol suddenly took out something from her pocket. This, please take it. The thing Tang Soyol took out was some unknown small bottle and a letter. What is this? It's the invitation for next year's military exhibition, and, you are offering it to me for. I did I want to keep a good relationship with the clans. There isn't anything else to it, we got the invitation every year, but it had a whole different meaning when it was an invitation from the family members of the main clan. It meant that they really wanted me to come. I didn't know what to do in this situation. Does she really have a crush on me? Then. What is this bottle? Is it some sort of medicine? Tang Soyo smiled when I asked about the bottle. It's a poison that I like. It's a gift, so please feel free to use it if you ever come across training with poison. I nodded my head to Tang Soyo's response. This girl also isn't normal. I was sure. It was hard for me to reject her gift, so I first put it in my pocket. I was sure that I would be able to come up with some excuse so that I wouldn't go to next year's exhibition. I will make sure I don't go. Anyways. I shall take my leave. I hope that you two have a good time together. Let's see each other again. Nangung by Dada slightly shakes her hand and gives me a farewell. My visage shifted a bit at her words, reluctance flashing through it as I accepted her farewell. Uh, yes. We shall meet again. I started walking after accepting her farewell. I really didn't like it. Tang Soyo also gave me a farewell which I accepted, although she was frozen like a stone. Why Seol Dada followed me with a ton of food in her mouth? How did all that fit into her mouth? Is it finally over? Can I finally return to my clan? My body wasn't feeling tired physically, thanks to the increase in my chi, but I felt exhausted mentally. I walked to the carriage, half limping. Asterisk 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 Namgung by Dot Ah looked at Gu Yangchen fading back. Then she was reminded of what he had said to her. Why are you speaking informally to me? Come to think of it. Why did I do that? 
In the end, Gu Yangchen was younger than her own brother, Nam Gung Chanjin. But that still didn't mean that she could just speak to him without respect. But even then, it felt comfortable speaking to him like that. What was the reason behind that? Nam Gung by Dot Ah couldn't even understand herself, which made her tilt her head in confusion. Ah, uh, Tang Soyo called out to her. Hmm, do you perhaps like young Master Gu? Ha! Huh. Nam Gung by Dot Ah couldn't understand Tang Soyo's question. Like. Like. Eh. Uh, uh, what I mean is that, uh, Tang Soyo looked startled upon hearing her question. Her face turned red, and she gradually turned silent. I guess even Tang Soyo didn't know the answer as she couldn't answer easily. Like. I wonder what that meant. Does she mean from girl liking a boy? If I asked myself if I liked Gu Yangchen as a man, I felt like I didn't. But I was interested in him as a martial artist. He was completely different. The Gu Yangchen I met at first. And the Gu Yangchen that broke my younger brother's arm. Were they even the same person? I didn't know the answer. That was the sad truth. So I wanted to spar with him, but I was rejected instantly. If someone asked me right now if I could beat Gu Yangchen in a duel, I felt like I could say yes. That, however, would only be my answer for right now. It was shocking, the fact that even someone at Namgung by Dada's level wasn't sure how to assess Gu Yangchen. Even putting aside that matter, the fact alone that Gu Yangchen didn't produce a horrible smell, he's a person that occupies a space in my mind. Maybe I do like him. The words Namgung by Dada subconsciously said made Tang Soyo look like she was going to cry. What's wrong? Nothing, Tang Soyo quietly mumbled to herself, there is nothing I can do if she is the one I'm against, what does she mean by, there's nothing she can do? What about Soyo? Ha! Huh. That thing, you were supposed to give it to me. Oh! The invitation letter that Tang Soyo gave to Gu Yangchen, was originally for me. Ever since I met Tang Soyo for the first time, it had always been like that. However, Tang Soyo gave it to someone else this time around. That made Nam Gung by Dot Ah ask Tang Soyo, as she had become curious. I, uh, Tang Soyo stuttered as she was startled by the question. I felt like her stuttering had increased recently. What's the matter with her? Is she sick? The stench that Tang Soyo gave out was quite slight. I could almost ignore it if I didn't actively try to smell it. That made Tang Soyo a person comfortable to be around. Which was why I prayed that she wasn't sick. I, wanted to become closer to him. I see. I'm sorry. You're disappointed right? Hmm. I'm fine. It was possible for her to attend it even without a direct invitation from a direct family member. Nam Gung by Dada felt like there was no need to be disappointed for such a thing. Shall we go back? Tang Soyo asked, disappointment lacing her tone. What is she so disappointed about? I had many questions. Yeah. Nam Gung by Dada moved along with Tang Soyo. Without Gu Yangchen being here, she would have to return to the place with the horrendous stench, but she was used to such a life. So Nam Gung by Dot Ah didn't become disappointed. Thankfully though, I feel like we'll meet again soon. That was what she felt for some reason. And Nam Gung by Dot Ah's predictions were something that came true most of the time. Chapter 41 Sword Phoenix, 1, you are listening at Novel Full Dot Audio. Sword Phoenix 1. The Namgung Clan. A famous sword clan that acted as the pillar of the Orthodox faction and were often called the heart of the four noble clans. When the blood demon brought the blood disaster upon the world, the person that slayed the blood demon was none other than Namgung Juchen, the lord of the Namgung clan at the time. Before Sword Emperor's reign, the Namgung was the clan known to harbor the world's strongest sword wielders. At the moment, the current lord of the clan, the Azure Heavenly Sword, Nam Gung Jin, was talking to his son. I told you to take good care of your elder sister, 
and instead you come back after losing your escort. Not only did he challenge a person younger than him to a duel, he went on to lose to him while also attempting to kill him. Furthermore, he came back with his arms broken as well. And this is supposed to be my son. The bigger problem at the moment, however, was, dot, Machiel, there weren't many martial artists that Nam Gung Jin remembered by name. That was because there were far too many martial artists that were talented. He was a martial artist that reached a peak level. Machiel, the martial artist who had been acting as an escort, was someone who held the title of Sword of Azure Wind. His was a name that Nam Gung Jin remembered. There weren't many people who reached the level of peak at such a young age, and he had seemed like someone with good potential for his future. But all of sudden that man had gone missing. Nam Gung Jin couldn't understand this situation. You lost a martial artist at the peak realm just because you lost to a young prodigy that hasn't even spread his name to the world yet. Nam Gung Chanjin couldn't muster up a response to Nam Gung Jin's question. He only quietly clenched his teeth. Not even he could understand what had happened. What the hell happened? Nam Gung Chanjin understood that there was a high chance that the mission would take a few days. Because even if he had ordered Machiel out of anger, he knew that it would be a very difficult mission for him to achieve. But even so, Machiel told Nam Gung Chanjin that he'd found a chance and that he would be back. And Nam Gung Chanjin had never seen Machiel fail a mission after he said those words. That was why when Nam Gung by Dot Ah asked Nam Gung Chanjin that she wanted to bid farewell to Gu Clan's young master, he'd allowed her to leave without saying anything. Since he shouldn't have been alive anymore at that point. That was what was supposed to happen. But instead, when Nam Gung by Dot Ah returned, she told Nam Gung Chanjin that she bid the Gu Clan's young master farewell. And that he was fine and as such, they soon returned to their clan right after. So, what about Machiel? What had happened to Nam Gung Chanjin's personal escort? Was he killed? That was impossible in Nam Gung Chanjin's mind. Machiel was a peak martial artist. It required natural talent for a martial artist to go from first dot rate to peak realm martial artist. It was a level that the average martial artist couldn't reach no matter how much training they went through. Nam Gung Chanjin knew this much about martial artists who had reached the peak realm. And Machiel was a certified martial artist that reached a peak level. So, the thought of him losing to someone who was barely at the second dot rate level. That was simply impossible. Maybe he was ambushed. Maybe they knew beforehand that this would happen. But, how would he know in the first place? And what did they do for Machiel to just disappear like that? Whatever had transpired, the fact was that this was a bad situation for Nam Gung Chanjin. It was a huge problem for him to lose his direct escort because of his own stubbornness. Furthermore, Gu Yangchen now knew about his actions, or so Nam Gung Chanjin thought. That piece of shit. Thinking of Gu Yangchen made him boil inside. The place he got kicked at and the arm that had been broken by him had all been cured but the wrath inside Nam Gung Chanjin still lingered. Chanjin. Yes, father. Nam Gung Jin slowly walked towards Nam Gung Chanjin. Nam Gung Chanjin clenched his eyes shut. Nam Gung Jin never physically laid hands on his own blood. He only came closer. The direct descendants of the Nam Gung clan possessed abilities to exude pressure on the surrounding, abilities which got stronger as the person themselves grew as a martial artist. There was nothing more to say about the lord of the Nam Gung clan who was known as the strongest besides the three heavenly venerables. This ability was released as the lord of the Nam Gung clan slowly closed the gap between them. And as the lord stepped forward, Nam Gung Chanjin found it harder and harder to breathe. Ok, Nam Gung Chanjin groaned in pain due to the pressure. I'm disappointed in you. Not because you lost to a younger prodigy, nor because you attempted to kill him. Nam Gung Chanjin knew why his father was disappointed in him. It was something that had been taught to him ever since he was young. I'm disappointed in you because you failed to clean up your own mess. Nam Gung Chanjin felt like he would vomit due to the pressure that was pressing down on him 
but he did everything he could to hold it in. He knew that his father's anger would only grow if he threw up then and there. To keep his dignity and honor as a member of the Namgung clan. That was what Namgung Chanjin prioritized the most. And if there was a person that damaged his dignity or honor. It was Namgung's way to get rid of them no matter what. As punishment, you will be imprisoned for three months. Any objections? N.No, father, the pressure disappeared after Namgung Chanjin's response. Namgung Jin then asked Namgung Chanjin who was still struggling to breathe. The Gu clan, you said. Yes, father. The Gu clan where the tiger warrior was their lord. Namgung Jin made a strange face after hearing Namgung Chanjin's response. It was an expression that Namgung Chanjin had never seen on his father's face. Out of all the clans, it had to be the Gu clan, huh? After those words, Namgung Jin turned around and walked towards the flag that was hung up near the Lord's room. The word Namgung was written clearly on the flag. After thinking for a moment, Namgung Jin spoke to Namgung Chanjin, forget everything about the Gu clan from now. Father. It was the first time. That his own father had told him to forget about something. He had taught him his entire life to never forget about grudges, but all of sudden, he was contradicting his own teachings. You will know in the future when you become the lord of the clan. Up until then, don't mess with the Gu clan. Yes, father. In the end, Namgung Chanjin couldn't go against Namgung Jin's order. All Namgung Chanjin was able to do was just nod at his father's words. As we might become one with them soon. For a brief second, Namgung Chanjin was stunned by his father's words. He couldn't understand what they meant. What, do you mean by that? Your sister agreed to go through marriage with a clan. Father. Namgung Chanjin increased his voice by accident. He immediately shut his mouth due to Namgung Jin's fierce glare, but the news he'd just heard was all too sudden for Namgung Chanjin to take in. Her name wasn't known to the world just yet, but she was a woman who had the most natural talent out of all the family members of the clan. Namgung Chanjin's beautiful, perfect sister. The flower of the Namgung clan. Namgung Chanjin believed that if his sister was more active in the outside world then she would have been the one to gain the title of the Sword Phoenix instead of its current bearer. But all of sudden, my perfect sister is going to marry someone. It was just too sudden for Namgung Chanjin. He quickly hid his shaking hands so that Namgung Jin wouldn't notice, and then spoke. T.T.O. Which clan, you say? Namgung Jin looked at his son. He easily noticed his trembling pupils as well as the rough breathing that he couldn't control. He still lacked so much. He couldn't even hide such simple things. But Namgung Chanjin was required to rule the clan in the future. So if he lacked anything, it was natural for him to be corrected. And those corrections would be instilled by force if it was deemed necessary. Namgung Jin slowly opened his mouth while looking at Namgung Chanjin. Namgung Chanjin's eyes widened following Namgung Jin's words. What? Gu Yangchen blurted out in response to the second elder who was telling him crazy things. What did you say just now? I said that our clan agreed to an engagement between you and the Namgung clan's daughter. Pardon? What nonsense is he on about? It had taken us ten days to return to my clan after leaving Sichuan. We had hurried on our way to Sichuan because we didn't have much time to spare, but as we had no such constrictions, we took our time on the way back. I also had to spend some time organizing my newly increased chi anyways. And after finally returning from the trip that made me exhausted, the second elder who I hadn't seen in a while, practically just straight out hurled shit at me. A marriage has been arranged for you. What did you just say? He'd spouted those words at me the instant we met, without even bothering to respond to my greeting. My brows furrowed upon hearing his sudden words. I hadn't even unpacked yet, and he came at me, saying all of this out of the blue. In fact, how long had it been since the engagement between our clan and the Ping clan was annulled? 
For me, it was hard to remember as it had been forever, but in real time, it probably hadn't been that long. But all of sudden a new marriage had been arranged for me. This is new. In my previous life, after my marriage agreement with Peng Ah Dati broke, there were no other marriages arranged for me. It was, of course, in part due to the rumors of me being a trashy person, which in turn made every clan avoid marriage with me. I had thought that it would be the same in this life, so, what happened? I responded to the second elder while feeling overwhelmed. Lord Second Elder, do you really have to joke around when I'm this tired? Hey! Do you really think that this old man would joke around with someone like you? You usually do, why are you denying it all of sudden? Had a marriage actually been agreed upon? I feel like I'm screwed. I felt like I had messed something up. Why see old Dada popped up in my head, but I ignored it right away. If it's real, then who am I marrying? I thought about all the possible girls that I could marry. It couldn't be Peng Ah Dati since we'd already broken off our engagement. And I didn't feel like I had many options outside of her. I was reminded of one in particular from the Moyong clan, but let's exclude that crazy bitch for now as she only chased around the lightning sword even in my previous life. There were probably many options if I excluded the four noble clans, but I didn't really know many girls. I could only count them on one hand if I had to. Maybe Tang Soyo. This was possible as she didn't marry anyone in my previous life. But someone who gives me poison as a gift is a bit. Anyways, what could I have done that messed things up so badly? I couldn't think of a single thing. I wondered where it all started going wrong. No. I can't think of one because there are too many. The clan your marriage was agreed with, the second elder spoke whilst picking his ear with his pinky finger. As if the issue wasn't at all important to him. The Namgung clan. Pardon. I retorted immediately upon hearing the unexpected response. What? Where? What did you say just now? I was told that your marriage was arranged with the Namgung clan's daughter. What? The Namgung clan. Maybe there is another Namgung clan's daughter that I didn't know about. Maybe there was another Namgung clan that had a slightly different name. I begged that was the case as there was only one daughter of the Namgung kin that I knew of. The daughter's name was something like Namgung by Dot A. They were hinting to me that they won't hand her over so easily as she was the pride and joy of the clan, so this old man did everything he can to make this possible. Fuck me. Nothing ever went my way in this goddamn world. What did you even do to make this even possible in the first place? Me. Marrying that lunatic. Why? What did he do in order for Namgung by Dot A to marry me? While I was still struggling to take in such facts, the second elder continued to speak without caring. Anyways, that isn't what's important, so hear it from your father later, as I have something more important to tell you. Wait, second elder sir, how could you say this isn't important? What could be more important than this? I'd been arranged to marry that crazy bitch, and you're telling me that that isn't the most important thing. I tried to talk back to the second elder, but I had to shut my mouth following his next words. Your sister has returned. Ha! Huh. The world's greatest prodigy, Sword Phoenix Gu Huibi. She had returned to the clan. The second elder spoke to me while tapping my shoulders. Whibby was looking for you as she really wanted to see you. It really makes me happy to see you siblings get along so well. Whibby should be in the Lord's room, so you should, Yangchen. I didn't let the second elder finish. I only had one thing in my mind right now. Fuck. Fuck, 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 f-u-c-k. I have to run away now. Marriage or whatnot, I just had to run away for now. Chapter 42 Sword Phoenix, 2, you are listening at NovelFull.audio Sword Phoenix, 2 The Dishonored Venerable, one of the Heavenly Venerables, often said that, we are living in the age of shooting stars. 
It was a saying that he coined because genius martial artists continued to appear out of nowhere as if they had fallen from the sky akin to a shooting star. It was an unfair world. There were too many young people with great natural talent, so many that a lot of them ended up becoming prodigies rather than geniuses. Then those who were deemed to be prodigies became mediocre. And in the end, those who should have been able to pass off as mediocre ended up being seen as dunces. It truly was an unfair world to live in. This may have been the greatest era of the world when looked at from certain perspectives as there were countless great martial artists that popped up. But it was the opposite for me. You were born in the wrong generation. I'd heard it before. You aren't talentless. But it's not enough. I'd heard it thousands of times. A bit disappointing when compared to your elder sisters. No, I'd heard it tens of thousands of times. It was around this time in my previous life that rage began to fill me. Because I wasn't the only star to shine in this world that had been filled with far too many stars. At that time, I blamed it all on the absurdity of this world. Since blaming my own blood didn't make sense as my sisters shined throughout the world. However, even if I didn't become the star of the world, it didn't matter much. Because even among the stars, some stars outshined others. Some examples were the Lightning Sword of the Namgung Clan and the Poison Queen of the Tang Clan. Mount Hua's Dragon Sword was still quiet around this time, but even he would light his sword with flames that would outshine others. It also wouldn't be long until Mudang's Sleeping Dragon woke up. Out of all the countless young martial artists of the world, the ones who became the dragons and the phoenixes with talent and effort represented the stars of this current era. Many had believed that the future zenith of the world would come from one of the dragons and phoenixes. The sword phoenix was special even among them. She was the greatest prodigy of them all. The one who showed her might even while being surrounded by many dragons of the world. After Peng Wujin took the position of young lord in clan and stepped down as the greatest prodigy, that title automatically went to the sword phoenix. Surprisingly, no one objected to it. The young prodigies who were most likely filled with pride and arrogance didn't even dare to object to that it showed in essence just how mighty the sword phoenix truly was. And, it was why I'd never liked her. I never liked how even as we'd come from the same father, she had talents that I couldn't even dream of having. I never liked how the Sword Phoenix would always be mentioned before my name wherever I went. To me, the Sword Phoenix was like a mountain that I wouldn't ever be able to climb no matter what I did. Or like an ocean that I couldn't cross to the other side no matter how much I rode. That was why I didn't like her. Why I wanted to run away every time her name was mentioned. Well, after telling myself all of that for a long time, a thought popped into my mind. Is this really true? It was a question I had no answer to. Because I already knew the answer in the first place. The biggest problem of them all, is, that no matter how many reasons I make up to hate her, I was always aware of one fact. That even if I made countless reasons to hate her, I couldn't truly hate her in the end. That was what I didn't like. At least up until now, little brother. Yeah. Ha. Huh. Yeah. Dot. Yes. I meant, yes, sister. Yes, yes. This is the way it should be. Hey your hands are going down, lift them up properly. Yes. I lifted my shaky arms up in the air and thought, not hate her my ass. I felt like I could do it easily now. This cruel bitch. I who had run away as soon as I heard the news, was caught right away, all too easily. The second elder who was right in front of me instantly reached out and grabbed me. Where are you going? Lord second elder, can you please pretend you didn't see me, just this once? What are you talking about? Let alone the marriage, I told you your sister came back. Yes, one of them is enough, but now I'm running away because there are two reasons for me to. This old man can't understand you. Your sister came back after a long time, so why are you running away? How can I see her without knowing what she'll do to me? I'm going to go live in the mountains for a few months, so don't look for me. 
Did you get sick during your trip to Sichuan or something? Why are you acting like this? It makes me want to knock you out. I stopped my actions following the second elder's scary words. This crazy old man. And out of all the places he could have grabbed me, he just had to grab me by my neck, now I couldn't do anything to run away. Even if my chi had increased, compared to the second elder, it was still nothing. But, even then, I continued looking for the best path of escape and how I could initiate said escape. Then, I felt a presence that I did not want to ever feel. It's. It's coming closer. I thought she was in the Lord's room. I felt a presence from far away moving coming closer and closer to us. I was able to notice it from this far thanks to my newly improved chi. As the presence came closer, I felt my body start heating up. What the? What is this? Her presence alone was causing me to feel pressure. Honestly, did she manifest flames around herself or something? How can a human being come closer this casually while releasing an aura of that magnitude? At least try to hide it. The crazy bitch didn't even try one bit to hide her chi, as if she was actively trying to melt the whole place down. The second elder let me go after he felt the grand chi approaching us. He knew that even if I tried to run away now, there would be no point. And as soon as I finished thinking, someone lightly jumped over the gate and appeared in front of us. I turned to look at the intruder. Unlike the chi she was emanating, she had a very fragile body. Her long hair had shades of red, and her eyes were colored a dark red, definite proof that she had reached the fifth realm of the destructive flame martial arts, and that she was a martial artist who could proudly identify herself as one of the strong martial artists in the world. She inherited the fierce look typical of the Gu clan, but she had well-dot-formed facial features which made her a beauty. To compare, while my second sister had an innocent-looking face, this terrifying creature inherited all of my father's facial features. The cape that was being blown away by her chi had a picture of a golden tiger in it. The cape that the leader of the swordsmen of the Gu clan wore. The woman stared at me for what seemed to be an eternity and then suddenly swept back her hair. It was only then, that the pressuring chi finally disappeared. When I finally found myself able to breathe comfortably, the woman with red lips spoke. Little brother. Yeah. You should greet your sister when you see her first. Cold sweat flowed down my face. What should I say? I thought of hundreds of things I could say, and finally settled on one and spoke. Hi. There was no response. She only tilted her head sideways. It looked like she wasn't satisfied with my response, so I pressed on. Hello, eldest sister. Nod. She nodded right away, seemingly she was satisfied with my new response. I'm going to go insane. The sword phoenix, Gu Huibi. She was the eldest sister of mine who I hadn't seen for many years. How do I say this, she looks the same. Gu Huibi was looking at me with fiery eyes. Why is she staring down at me like that? No, wait, why is she? Our height shouldn't be that different. At that moment, I found that I had unknowingly lowered my knees to the ground. Ha! Huh. Did my instincts make me kneel? Shockingly, it seemed like the fear I'd felt made me act like that. I like how you act fast. Gu Huibi smiled ominously, seemingly satisfied with my current appearance. Her smile was extremely scary. You need to lift up your hands too. Ha! Huh. Why my hands? Are you going to make me repeat myself? I immediately raised my hands into air. This had also been done outside my own will. What shitty education this is. Little brother. Yeah. Ha. Huh. Yeah, dot. Yes. I mean, yes, sister. Yes, yes. This is the way it should be. Hey, your hands are going down, lift them up properly. Yes. Why was she acting this way when we hadn't seen each other in so long? When I looked at the second elder, hinting that I needed help, I saw him second elder looking at me with satisfaction. 
you siblings are still great to each other. Does this look good to you? Ha 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 ha. Gu Huibi, who for some reason gave me a punishment, left me hanging and showed respect towards the second elder. It has been a while, Lord Second Elder. Yes, it has. How have you been, Huibi? Same as always, Elder. Same indeed. I heard that you are doing a great job as the leader of the swordsmen. It's all thanks to everyone following me. The second elder and Gu Huibi were having a nice friendly conversation. It was all nice and all but, how long do I have to keep my hands up? Especially at my age. My hands were shaking. Not because my arms were tired, but out of shame. I swear. This just isn't it. I couldn't hold it. There was no way I was going to let myself be humiliated like this now that I've returned to a new life. I couldn't hold myself and brought my arms down to complain to Gu Huibi. How old am I for me to do such a thing? Raise them again. Yes. For fuck's sake. Gu Huibi turned away from the second elder and moved closer to me to look at me. Thanks to her eyes being lit in red due to her chi, it made her look more mysterious and scary. Little brother. Yes. Do you know what you did wrong? Trying to run away when I heard of your return to the clan. You tried to what? Fuck me. That's not it. When I tried to avoid eye contact after letting out a fake cough, Gu Huibi poked my cheek with one finger and forcefully turned my head around. What's going on? What did I do for me to get punished right now? They say that humans become smarter during emergencies, that was probably true as I immediately thought of another reason. Is it because of second sister? Yansio. Yes, if you are punishing me because I slapped her face. You slapped Yansio. I guess this isn't it either. I felt like I was admitting all my sins accidentally. But the weird thing was, Gu Huibi looked apathetic even though I was admitting the said sins. I wonder what was up with her to the extent that she didn't seem to care about her younger sister getting slapped. That's weird, I didn't know Yansio would get slapped by someone at your level. If that's not the reason, then why are you giving me this punishment? It looked like my words displeased her, as she looked at me with forceful eyes. Her stare felt like it was pricking my skin. You. Yes. I heard you are arranging another marriage. Ha. Huh. I unconsciously made a dumb face. What did I just hear from her? Did I hear her correctly? I think she said marriage. But, what does me marrying someone have to do with me getting punished right now? Gu Huibi continued speaking, uncaring about my thoughts and confusion. Why didn't you tell me this beforehand? Because I also found out today. I mean, even if I knew earlier, why would I have to tell Gu Huibi this? So wait, I'm really getting punished because of this stupid reason. That's why you are mad at me. Of course this is why I'm mad. How dare you go through another marriage without my permission? What are you saying right now? Are you crazy? I could only laugh dryly at this absurd situation. What the hell is she on about, did she get drunk in the day or something? When I shouted back at her, Gu Huibi frowned. That was the expression of her getting really angry. T that this might be a bit dangerous. Swoosh. As I had predicted, heat emanated from Gu Huibi's body. I could just tell how much chi she possessed thanks to her cape flapping like crazy. I think I'm screwed. The instincts I'd honed as a little brother who grew up with beatings were telling me that it wasn't too late to put my head on the ground. But my logic told me that it was too late. You idiot, what are you telling me to do then? When I sneakily shuffled back in order to run away, I heard Gu Huibi's scary voice. Crazy. How dare you say such. Young master. Then an unexpected voice interrupted the current situation. Gu Huibi's chi that was about to explode any moment disappeared in an instant. I turned to the direction that the voice came from and saw Y Seol Dada holding a dish of warm dumplings and staring at me. What, 
I then felt a cold sensation, so I looked away from YCO.A and at Gu Huibi again. Gu Huibi who had previously looking at me with fierce fiery eyes, was now glaring at YCO.A. Advanced chapters available on our Sid Illustratins on our Discord, discord.gg slash incisals you can rate this series here. We are recruiting. We are looking for Korean translators. For more details please join Genesis Discord server. Chapter 43 Sword Phoenix, 3, you are listening at novel full.audio. Sword Phoenix, 3 Why does YCO.A just need to appear at the worst possible time? And as if to make things worse, she was holding dumplings. Young master. I brought you dumplings. Oh, she's holding them because of me. Did she hear me when I mumbled about wanting to eat dumplings on our way back home? If that was the case, I felt proud, although I was still unhappy with the current situation, because I still had to deal with the raging boar before me. Young master. Why are you kneeling down like that? Why see old dot I inquired. Yeah. I'm also curious about why I'm kneeling. Just as I sought to get up, little brother. Gu Huibi spoke, as if she had been waiting for that moment. Thanks to that, I froze mid-rise, my knees half bent. That, over there, who is that? Gu Huibi's eyes were focused on Y C O D A while she spoke. I don't know what this fiery woman will do to her. Gu Huibi took one step closer to Y C O D A. Swoosh. And I instantly charged up my destructive flame art. I didn't expect Gu Huibi to do something dangerous, as with memories from my previous life I knew that she always made sure she didn't jump to violence right away. But even then, I had to be prepared, it was always better to prepare for the worst. Gu Huibi's eyes suddenly shook. It looked like she was going to do something, I first had to protect Y. Kia. Fucking hell. She was too fast. She was way faster than I'd expected. In a flash, Gu Huibi went towards YCO.A and grabbed her cheeks. YCO.A let out a weird screams after she was caught, but Gu Huibi just kept massaging her cheeks as if she was charmed by them. How can one's cheeks look so soft? And it's even softer than it seems. Ah. Ah. Help me, young Moss. I didn't know what to say in the situation unfolding before my eyes. Should I be relieved? Or do I need to stop her? Thankfully though, Gu Huibi seemed to have no intentions of harming YCO.A. Unless that's her way of harming her. While YCO.A's cheeks were being stretched by Gu Huibi's hands, I ignored YCO.A and stood up. Once Gu Huibi was satisfied, she let go of YCO.A's cheeks. This girl, is she your servant? Yes. You want to give it to me? No, I accidentally snapped back at her. Gu Huibi seemed initially surprised upon hearing my brief but decisive answer. Then she smiled slightly. It was scary seeing her smile, she resembled father way too much. How strange. I didn't notice when she did it, but I suddenly and once again felt the blistering heat that accompanied Gu Huibi possessed. The difference between hers and Gu Yansio or Gu Jiliup's heat couldn't be mistaken. Simply feeling the heat made it hard for me to keep my eyes open. Her being in five realm clearly shows the gap between us. If my physical body was trained a bit more such that I reached the fourth realm of the destructive flame art, I'd be able to go to certain places without a fear of getting beat up. The real problem though, was the training needed to reach the fifth realm. The fifth realm meant that one had to show their true worth as a martial artist. Reaching that realm required not just intensive training, but also a lot of enlightenment. It was at that point that one could truly swathe their body with visible red chi, the point where their eyes and hair started to become red as they became one with the art. Gu Huibi was already at that point. Her hair was slightly red and her eyes brightly dyed in the color red. I could somehow manage to hold myself against others with my pathetic chi, 
but going against Gu Huibi who was a bona fide fifth rank practitioner would be me asking too much of myself. It's really strange for my little brother to decline my request. Gu Huibi's hair was being blown away by her own heat. It felt like I was going to melt because of the heat, but I was able to withstand it by surrounding myself with my own chi. Gu Huibi quietly stared at me after speaking. I wondered what she was thinking. But I quickly rerouted my thoughts to my first priority at the moment. Quietly retrieving Y C O L D A. Not her. Gu Huibi's eyebrow flinched at my words, visibly unhappy with my response. She then released more chi, further intensifying the pressure. I didn't lose to it however, and continued to withstand the heat. The weird thing was that, while I should have been struggling to even breathe at the moment, let alone stand up, I was somehow able to easily push away the pressure. I guess it would be more correct to say that I'm changing the direction of the heat rather than pushing it away. However, I myself wondered how it was happening. The Gu clan's chi was rather violent and fierce. But what I was doing currently was not breaking apart the chi, but instead parting it in a way that it flowed to a different direction. It was similar to the art of the Mudong clan. And it looked like Gu Huibi noticed this as well as shortly after, the air that was filled with heat cooled down. Gu Huibi had retrieved all of her chi back into her body. This, is this you're doing, Lord Second Elder? Gu Huibi asked the Second Elder while pointing at me. How cruel of her to refer to me as this. The Second Elder shrugged his shoulders and responded to Gu Huibi's question. This old man didn't do anything. And you're telling me he changed this much in those few months. Gu Huibi's entertained expression only pressured me more. To be fair, it was a shock even for me to reach the third realm in the span of a few months. I didn't see this coming either. If my goal had been to reach the third rank by this year, then it meant that I still had half a year to spare thanks to my trip to Sichuan. Gu Huibi then spoke to me. The Lord is calling for you, so go quickly. Is your work here done? Did she really come here just to roar at me? Does she think that she's some sort of a fighting machine? Although she wouldn't be completely wrong with that. I wanted to give you a lesson as we haven't seen each other for a long time, but I don't feel like it anymore. Gu Huibi beckoned me with her hands to go quickly. Come to think of it, wasn't this my place and my house? I wanted to complain to her as I didn't like the situation, but I felt that if I actually complained to the crazy fire boar I might actually die so, I just quietly walked away. Oh, little brother. I turned around to Gu Huibi's call. Then Gu Huibi flung something at me. The thing I caught was a small lucky pocket. It's a gift. What is this? Make sure you put it on your waist. Or else I'm going to punish you. When I looked inside the lucky pocket, there was a yellow marble inside. What is this? A demonic stone. I didn't think that was what it was however, I didn't feel anything within the marble. Gu Huibi spoke to me while I was looking at the lucky pocket. Some peddler was selling it as a charm so don't talk back and do what I told you to do. Basically, she bought me some trash and told me that she would punish me if I didn't do what she ordered. I put it near my waist area. I knew she didn't have any bad intentions. I knew that Gu Huibi wasn't the type of person to do such a thing. Oh, if you lose it by any chance, know that I'll bend you in half. Sigh. After Gu Yangchen left to go to the Lord's room, Gu Huibi spoke to the second elder again. Are you sure you didn't do anything? I told you, this old man didn't do anything. The second elder wasn't the type to lie about most things. That was one thing Gu Huibi was certain of about the second elder. And she would usually believe everything that the second elder would tell her, however. The last time I saw him was in winter, and he was a child that only reached the first rank of the flame arts. The first realm, it was a realm that was achievable by just learning the basics of the flame arts. Gu Yangchen had still been at that level even after years of him learning the flame arts. And that had continued to be the same even after Gu Huibi left for a mission. His movements had been terrible to watch, let alone his actions of trying to wrap himself in qi. 
It had been like comparing the sky to the ground when it came to Yansio and Yangchen. Dot but then what about now? How did he reach his current realm so fast? It was strange in the first place to hear that he had beaten Yansio in a duel. When Gu Huibi had first heard it, she had thought that it was a coincidence. Yansio was probably in a bad condition that day, those had been her thoughts. Coincidence combined with more coincidences had given birth to the miracle where Yanchen beat Yansio, so Gu Huibi had believed. However, when she heard of Gu Yansio not coming to greet her even though she had most likely heard of my return, Gu Huibi realized that perhaps things weren't as simple as she'd initially believed. And after taking a brief look at Gu Yangchen she was able to see that he was the third realm and was pushing for the fourth. He hadn't quite reached the fourth realm yet, but he was basically at that level. It meant that it wouldn't be long until he reached the fourth rank. It hadn't taken Gu Huibi a long time to progress from the third realm to the fourth realm, but the problem was Gu Yangchen's progression rate. Not even she herself had progressed at such a startling pace, let alone Gu Yansio. But then that kid, in only the span of a few months. Isn't it shocking? The second elder asked. How can it not be? This old man is also shocked. I didn't know that child had so much potential inside him. When the second elder spoke to Gu Yangchen about the marriage arrangement, he had to hide his shock. The qi he possesses is immensely stronger now. What happened in Sichuan in order for him to change that much? It was already shocking enough to see the change in Gu Yangchen before, but now he was a completely different person, as if he had cleared a whole dungeon by himself. The quantity of his qi had increased, but not by much. It just looked like a lot since he didn't have much qi to begin with. However, the quality of his qi was a completely different case. The second elder was able to notice this when he saw Gu Yangchen change the flow of Gu Huibi's heat. Just what exactly happened? The second elder had wanted to follow Gu Yangchen to Sichuan, but he couldn't neglect all the work he was given. Such as the marriage arrangement. And other businesses as well. It feels like I've missed something huge. Also, this kid, Gu Huibi looked for Y C O Da Da who was supposed to be next to her. Where did she go? Wasn't she here in front of me just now? What's wrong? Oh, I was looking for the servant. She's a girl that just started working as a servant. She doesn't know much about the world, so don't be too harsh on her. Yes, but that child. Gu Huibi wasn't the type to care about servants. But she'd felt something strange with Y C O Da A. She had felt a strange feeling that, one that she couldn't explain in words, which had made her keep touching her, but in the end Gu Huibi failed to find its cause. Maybe it's a mistake, it was truly strange. Gu Huibi had been swinging her sword for the past few months. That meant that she still had quite the acute sense. But then she had failed to notice the servant disappearing in addition to her sensing something strange within her. Maybe it's a mistake since I'm too sensitive. Maybe she was overreacting because she was used to always being on guard. The second elder, meanwhile, tried to hide his shock. She noticed. There was no way that Gu Huibi should have been able to notice anything weird about Y C O Da Da at her current level. But surprisingly, her improved senses was able to enable her to catch the weirdness that lay within Y C O Da Da. Such monstrous talent, both you and Yangchen. You said something. No. You are still the same as ever, for you to look for Yangchen as soon as you come back. I don't think I should be hearing this from you, Gu Huibi scratched her cheek. Almost everyone in the clan had turned their back on Gu Yangchen at this point. The lord of the clan, the tiger warrior had never seemed to care about him to begin with, and his second sister Gu Yansio had already turned away from him a while ago. The last born though. Let's save that for later. The only people that had tried to fix Gu Yangchen in the clan were Gu Huibi and the second elder. Would it hurt for you to be gentler with him? You know better than me that being gentle doesn't get through to him. Hmm. He was different these days, but the second elder couldn't deny that fact. Gu Yangchen may have become more mature, 
but he still had that crepey personality within him. Still, the second elder still felt that Gu Huibi went a bit too far. The second elder continued to speak after letting out a fake cough. But even so, isn't it a bit much for you to punish your little brother for a marriage arrangement? Of course, to you, it may have been just an act, Huibi. Yes, yes. Of course it was all an act. Gu Huibi who responded with a smile had eyelids twitching. The second elder saw this and decided to think that she was just tired. There's no way that she truly gave her own little brother a punishment for a marriage agreement. No way is she so narrow dot minded. Yeah, no way. The second elder ignored Gu Huibi who looked shaken for some reason. Meanwhile, in the Lord's room. I heard that you destroyed the lightning dragon's arm. No, I didn't destroy it. I simply broke it. Gu Yangchen felt like he was fucked. Chapter 44 Sword Phoenix, 4, you are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Sword Phoenix, 4 I heard that you destroyed the lightning dragon's arm. My father uttered those words the instant I stepped into his room. Without even a greeting, he asked me a question straight away. And what a hard question this is. I knew that he was always like this, but still. I also didn't know how to answer. Should I just tell him the way it happened? No, I didn't destroy it. I simply broke it. That was the response I came up with after thinking it through, and it wasn't much of a reply. They both pretty much meant the same thing, but I couldn't just say nothing. Thankfully, my father didn't seem to care too much about my response. And why did you do that? That was the most important question anyways. He had probably heard about everything from the servants but still wanted to hear it directly from me. After taking a deep breath, I slowly started to speak. I accepted a duel that the lightning dragon first challenged me to, and since he attempted to kill me, I retaliated. It was a rather short answer, but that was all to it in reality. I might have taunted him a little as he was being annoying, but it was his fault for getting baited. The lightning dragon tried to kill you. Yes, we promised each other to not use our chi, but he put chi into the wooden sword he was using, and attempted to kill me with it. Evidence All the spectators that were watching the person who had noticed it the most clearly was probably the young lord of the Tang clan. Tang Soyol was also there, but she didn't look trustworthy as she seemed numb after my duel ended. My father nodded to my response. Then that's all there's to it. No matter how many times I looked at him, he had always had a bland reaction. He'd just heard that his son won against the lighting dragon in a duel, but he showed no reaction. I almost never saw the sight of my father being shaken by anything. Even when his own son turned into a demon, even when his children were dying one by one, and even when he himself was dying. While I was standing in silence, he suddenly spoke. It seems you've achieved a new level. Pardon. Those were the words that my father said to Gu Yansio during our meal before. It was funny to think that he was now saying the same words to me. But, even when I'd achieved the third realm of the flame arts in such a short amount of time, my father didn't seem to care all that much. He was almost too bland. Good work. Thank you. Ha. Huh. Even if it was a small compliment, my mouth kept trying to form a smile which I tried my best to stop. I couldn't believe how happy I was for being complimented at my age. Although this is a first for me. Have I ever been complimented by anyone? I don't think so. That was probably why I was so easily phased by such a small compliment. After asking me his questions, my father didn't speak any further. I sometimes wondered if he ever suspected me of lying. After my father finished looking at a letter, he brought up a new topic. I assume you also met your fiancé there since you had some conflicts with the Namgun clan. The real important matter. Sai, fiancé, ha. Huh. That word gave me goosebumps. I hid my trembling voice and asked my father, can I ask how this even happened? What? The marriage arrangement with the Namgung clan. 
I wanted to ask how it all happened. No matter how much I thought about it, it felt too random and sudden. I didn't get any new marriage agreement in my previous life, and furthermore it's with the Namgung clan. My father answered while neglecting my agony. It was a decision that was made in the elders' meeting. It shouldn't be a problem for you. Not a problem my ass. What happened in there that Namgung by Dot Ah suddenly become my fiancé? I heard my father speak while I was thinking furiously. You may have caused some trouble with the Peng clan's marriage arrangement, but I believe that you won't mess this one up. Did he notice that I wasn't fond of this marriage agreement? I detected the message hidden in his words. Don't mess up for a second time. Because of this, I couldn't really talk back to him. All I could do was keep my mouth shut. Flutter the sound of letters folding and opening echoed in the Lord's room while I stood in silence, waiting for his next words. Because father not telling me to leave meant that he still had something left to say. Tap tap it was the sound of him tapping the table with his ring finger. It was a natural habit of his whenever he had something to think about. I frowned upon seeing this habit of my father's. Because I had the same habit, and it was something that made me similar to him. Every time this happened, I was hit with the reality that at the end of the day, I was truly his son. The heart of summer is near. I was roused from my thoughts by my father's words. What is he on about all of sudden? Yes, it is indeed summer. I knew that it was getting hotter and hotter as days passed. But what made him talk about it? Wait, summer. The martial art tournament of Mount Hua will start soon. My heart skipped a beat at my father's words. I felt like I couldn't breathe when I heard Mount Hua. Because I was reminded of the Mount Hua that was burnt to ashes. Let's not think about that. I took a deep breath to calm down my heart. My father looked at my appearance and asked, something wrong. It's nothing. What about the tournament? My father didn't respond to my question and instead handed me a letter he'd been holding. I carefully took the letter and opened it. And then frowned at its contents. I looked back to my father. Why are you giving me this? Bring her here. But why? Because you have to. What nonsense is he on about? I continued to ask my father while not hiding my frown. You know that I just returned from a trip to Sichuan, right? I'll give you one week to prepare for your trip. I am assuming I don't have the option to say no. What kind of shitty order is this? Making me go through another long trip after I've just returned from one. I started thinking about the possibility of the heat getting to him, but that's kind of impossible for someone who literally trains in flame arts, no. Did he have a change in his mindset? The Gu clan was a clan that didn't really let its direct family members easily leave its vicinity. Gu Huibi was an exception to this as she was so talented that she was noticed by everyone. But I was different. It wasn't the weirdest thing for me, the son of the clan, to go on a trip to the outside world, but on the outside, I still looked very young, and I didn't know what his intentions were, sending me to the outside world this easily when I hadn't even become the young lord of the clan yet. Plus, I didn't think many people really appreciated my being in the outside world. That's what I thought that father thought about me, but he's telling me to go on a trip that far. Father, even so, isn't it a bit too much for you to tell me to go all the way to Mount Hua? If you don't want to, you don't have to. Oh. Then I'll take the option of not go. However, I'll reward you with, euphoric heavenly pill, from the clan's secret vault if you go. Dot of course I shall go as the son of the clan, do I leave right away. Because of the pill he mentioned, I accidentally said yes, was I being snobbish. I felt a little guilty as I looked at my father who was frowning a little. But going on a journey in exchange for heavenly pill was just that good a deal. It was a medicine that was the second best after Sorim Sowa medicine, and once consumed, it would give the person the amount of chi that they would get after 20 years of training. And my father was being serious about opening up the clan's secret vault to give it to me as a reward. My chi had already increased thanks to my previous trip but it wasn't all that much in reality, 
it only looked like a lot because of the pathetic chi I had possessed beforehand. In the end, both my physical body and the amount of chi I possessed were still lackluster. You said you'd give me one week of preparation for the trip. I felt like it wasn't enough time since I had some things to take care of. Do you need more time? May I leave after ten days? Father nodded to my request. Then he started to read letters again. How many letters did he have to read? Ten days, huh? Thankfully, he allowed me. I had ten days to spend in Shangxi, and it hurt me knowing that I had to leave again after such a long trip, but for the heavenly pill it was worth it. It was a bit weird for my father to bring up heavenly pill for such a task as this. He wouldn't lie about such things, but was this really significant enough that he would offer me that as a reward? My father suddenly pointed towards the door whilst I was standing and thinking. You are done here. Go and rest now. Yes. I felt uncomfortable being here, so I was relieved that I was allowed to leave. Although this meant that I had to visit the Hamun clan right away, and after that I also had to continue my training. Mount Hua, Ha. Huh? I had memories of the plum flowers blooming beautifully. And memories of all of them burning into ashes. Do I really have the right to step my foot into Mount Hua? Let's not think about it. This wasn't good. There would be no end once I started thinking about it. But, that wouldn't happen in this life. As always, I just had to keep the secrets to myself. All I have to do is just follow the order. It would do me more good to focus my thoughts on the mission I'd been given. I reorganized everything my father and I talked about after I left his room. Particularly the contents of my mission. Bringing the last dot born of Mount Hua to the Gu clan. When I returned to my place, the second elder and Gu Huibi had already left. How dared they cause so much trouble and just disappear like that? Of course, I was still thankful as I was able to enjoy the peacefulness. When I headed towards my room to change my clothes, I noticed the Sword Emperor holding a broom. The Sword Emperor, who also noticed me, bowed respectfully. It had been a while, and that appearance of him always made me feel uncomfortable. Sob, ha. Huh. When I looked towards the oddly familiar sound of crying, I noticed why Seol Da Ah was holding her hands up in the air with her knees on the floor as punishment. It was the same as what Gu Huibi had made me do before. What did she do for her to be punished like that? Tears were flowing down her face. Even then, the Sword Emperor didn't seem to care about why Seol Da Ah who was crying, and continued to clean the area. I wondered for a while about why she was getting punished, and realized the answer shortly after. Oh yes, she followed me to Sichuan secretly. It looked like she was getting punished for being gone for a whole month without telling him. Young Master, shit, my eyes met with Y C O Dada's gaze when I was trying to pass by without being noticed. Y C O Dada kept looking at asking me for help, but I couldn't do much about it. Running away is my only option. The one delivering the punishment was the Sword Emperor. This wasn't something I could help Y C O dot A with. Uh, it'll get colder at night, so please go rest once you're done. Still, I felt like I had to say something, so I spoke to the Sword Emperor. The Sword Emperor responded with a kind smile. Yes, thank you for the concern, young master. It's nothing. Getting cold at night my ass, it's summer. Y C O dot A looked shocked at my horrible attempt of saving her. Young Master. Ah uh, ah. Uh. How dare you raise your voice when you're being punished. Why Seol Dada cried like a dog to the Sword Emperor's punishment. I'm sorry. But I can't do much about this, and it's your fault in the end, so please bear with it. I left the area slipped into my room. And covered my ears as Why Seol Dada kept calling me from outside. I just wanted to lay down on my bed and sleep the tiredness off. I'd used up too much of my energy earlier in the day because of the whole marriage thing, then there was Gu Huibi's presence on top of that. Thought it would be fine if I just fell asleep now, as it was almost night time anyway. While I was trying to relax, I felt a presence outside the door. 
Young master, it's your servant, Homwa. What is it? I came here wondering if you want to have dinner. Oh, I don't really have a good appetite right now, so I'll pass. The servant left after my words. I thought about eating some dumplings, but I really didn't have a good appetite. I just wanted to sleep. Since I could just eat some food later after my midnight training. However, I started regretting my decision not even half an hour later of sending the servant away. Because someone barged into my room while I was taking a sweet nap. Little brother. You're not going to eat dinner you said. It was Gu Huibi who had a dumpling in her hand. Chapter 45 Sword Phoenix, 5, you are listening at NovelFull.audio Sword Phoenix, 5 How long has it been? Seeing as I still felt tired, it didn't seem like I'd slept for that long. What do you mean you're not going to eat when you need to grow up? I was forced to wake up to the sound that stabbed at my ears. On opening my eyes, the first thing that came into view was a dumpling. Why is there a dumpling here? Is this actually a dream? That seemed likely, considering I have only eaten dumplings for the past few days. Dumplings huh, are these beef dumplings? Little brother, are you talking in your sleep? Accompanying the suddenly heard voice was a familiar pair of red eyes. My brain only started to work when those eyes came into view. My blurry sight rapidly cleared, and as it did so sharp facial features appeared in front of me, forming a face that told me the identity of the individual before me. Sister. Yes, it's your awesome and beautiful sister. I ignored the last part of her words. Why are you here? Am I not allowed to be here? Yes, since this is my room. Which means it's also my room. What are you saying, are you drunk? Gu Huibi tried to give me a bonk on the head due to my words but I quickly moved to dodge. One of Gu Huibi's eyebrows visibly rose at my action. Ha! Huh. How dare you dodge me? Why are you trying to hit me as soon as you come into my room? How dare you talk to your older sister like that when she came to check on her little brother who said that he wouldn't eat? You could have just ordered a servant to do it. I was going to ask if she came here just to annoy me but I decided not to. If I did, I would probably get burnt alive. Gu Huibi lifted her hand up again in order to hit me, but she put it down shortly after. Did she just give up? She slowly handed over a dish of dumplings to me. I picked them up on my way here, so don't starve and eat. You just happened to just come across this many dumplings. You talk too much. Do you want to be burnt to a crisp along with these dumplings? Before she decided to act on her threat, I quickly started eating. Thanks to them being steamed recently, they were still warm. Thank you. Though I still felt uncomfortable around her, I couldn't deny the fact that she came here thinking about me. Gu Huibi chuckled at my response seemingly finding it funny. Thank you. The dumplings must really delicious, as I don't know how long it's been since my little brother said such kind words. Really? Well, I guess that's not too surprising. Because at around this time, the past me probably hated everyone in the clan, let alone the family members. I meant what I said, but it seems like you always have something to say, even when I'm simply saying thanks. Your crude manner of speaking hasn't changed, yet I wonder what happened for you to change so drastically. Is it because of the Namgung girl? I spat out the dumpling that was in my mouth at Gu Huibi's words. I'd started choking on it. Cough, cough, I guess you love her so much that you can choke on your food. I felt her sharp gaze on me as I coughed. What nonsense was she on about though? Why are you bringing up Namgung all of a sudden, I thought I was going to die. Was she pretty? Fuck sake. Gu Huibi wasn't even listening, she only cared about what she wanted to hear. Still, was she pretty, she asked. If we were being objective, then Namgung by Dot A was considered beautiful by many. Like, a lot. I would have to bring someone at least on YC old Dot level if they were to compete with Namgung by Dot looks. 
Her being covered in blood while sweeping through an army of enemies by herself and still managing to look beautiful was something I had become used to seeing in my previous life. Not that my opinion of her mattered since I had seen her so many times that I'd grown numb to it. The lightning sword said that she's pretty. You know him well. I've seen him a few times, but we never talked much, he also looked suspicious anyways. Since there were only so many prodigies that could become one of the dragons and the phoenixes of the world, they must have run into each other a few times. The weird thing about it was how Gu Huibi said that he looked suspicious. That Nangung fucker was pretty decent at acting, were Gu Huibi's senses that good. When I was about to finish the dumplings, Gu Huibi took something out from her pocket. I became speechless after seeing what she took out. Sister. What? What is that? Can't you tell just by looking? I can, which is why I'm asking for fuck's sake. The thing Gu Huibi had taken out was none other than white liquor. Why is she bringing alcohol to someone else's place? Gu Huibi giggled when she saw my expression. You want a drink? Be honest, did you actually come here so you could drink? I swear, she's not right in the head. Ignoring my words, Gu Huibi took out a glass for the liquor and started drinking by herself. Are you going to leave after you finish drinking? No. I'm going to sleep here. Hmm. That was easily the craziest thing I'd heard in the past few days. Then sleep here, I'll go sleep somewhere else. How can you be so cold? How nice would it be if us siblings slept together for the first time in a while? First time in a while my ass, when have we ever slept together? We had never been that close. Still, I had my guard up after I said so I could dodge if she tried to attack me again. Strangely enough, Gu Huibi simply smiled and looked up at the moon. What the? Did we ever sleep together? I never had a memory such as that even in my previous life, so what was that strange expression on her face? Gu Huibi then suddenly started laughing as if she'd only just heard my words. Yeah. We never even slept together once. You are so cold. When are you going to leave? Little brother, why are you constantly trying to kick me out? Because this is my room. Isn't it obvious? Gu Huibi continued drinking like she hadn't heard my response. Drip drip after some time spent drinking at frightening speeds, it looked like Gu Huibi was finally down to her last drops of liquor. After the last droplets fell into the glass, Gu Huibi retrieved it and stood up disappointedly. Was she finally leaving? Little brother. Gu Huibi suddenly called. It looked like she was a bit drunk because of her drinking so fast. Wait, is she drunk? I tilted my head in confusion. If she had reached the fifth realm in the flame arts, she had to be way over the level of a first-rate martial artist. Which would mean that alcohol shouldn't affect her too much. So she definitely purposely let the alcohol make her drunk. That was usually done by martial artists who enjoyed drinking, but had Gu Huibi ever enjoyed drinking? I had no memory of this. Hey. Gu Huibi waved her hands. She was signaling me to come towards her. The moonlight that was hidden behind her lit up Gu Huibi while she waved her hand. It looked like her red hair was shining more brightly thanks to the moonlight. Want to have a duel with your sister since the moon is beautiful. You really drank three bottles. Is she crazy? And what does a duel even have to do with moon? I accidentally dropped a dumpling because her random words had dumbfounded me. Gu Huibi just maintained her smile. I didn't like how her face was turning red because of the alcohol. Little brother. Yes. Are you going to be fine? About what? Is she talking about me getting beat up by her? In all honesty, I wasn't really into getting beat up, nor was I ready for it. I just wanted to go back to sleep since I still felt tired. After sleeping, I want to wake up and... That, are you going to be okay after not combining it? I dropped my dumpling following Gu Huibi's sudden words. I looked at Gu Huibi with shock. Gu Huibi's finger was pointing at my abdomen area. 
How did she know? I'd organized the chi that I gained from the giant snake, but the chi that ended up not incorporating with my chi continued to linger in my body. And the chi that lingered inside a martial artist's body served as poison to them. Even while knowing this, I couldn't afford to risk absorbing them as it could damage or even kill me. The thought of that was just too scary. Why did I always run into situations where I had the option of absorbing power? Maybe it's because I go to places or do things that make me run into them. The reason why I didn't let go of the lingering chi was because of my greed. The greedy thought that maybe I could absorb these chi as well. That was one of the reasons why my body felt tired when it shouldn't. The solution to the dilemma was simple. Let go of the lingering chi, it could be done during my training or during a fight. I spoke to Gu Huibi. Is that why you want to fight me so late at night? Not really, I just want to teach a little brat a lesson. What are you? I was then reminded of something. There was no way, but I still had my doubts. Is this why you were giving me all that crap earlier in the day too? When Gu Huibi appeared at my place with overpowering heat, in order to withstand her, I needed to use some of the lingering chi. Gu Huibi flinched at my words, but she immediately returned back to her usual expression. Little brother, aren't you going too far with that? Why would I make myself go through all that? Are you sure? You just keep talking. Maybe you'll shut up once I burn all your hair to a crisp. Burn all my hair. How can she be so violent? Unbeknownst to me, Gu Huibi already had a wooden sword in her hand. Where did she even get that? Maybe her main reason for coming here was to duel. Is your sister now seem like a joke to you because you haven't seen her in a while? You didn't grow one bit in height, but your confidence is through the roof. Gu Huibi said those mean words with an evil smile, but I didn't take them to heart. It was the same as when we met for the first time in a few months for Gu Huibi, and a few years for me, and it was the same right now. I finished the dumpling in my mouth and stood up to walk towards Gu Huibi. Gu Huibi's expression morphed into one of visible shock. Why did she look surprised when she called me? Whoa, little brother, you're not running away this time. You don't even want to beat me up that much anyways, so stop trying to scare me. I walked past Gu Huibi, heading towards the training area. I turned my head and spoke to Gu Huibi as I did so. If we fight here the whole building will be destroyed. How funny of you to worry about the building when you'll be done after just one blow. Gu Huibi then giggled after those words. I ignored her and slowly walked towards the training area. I would usually talk and fight back following such words, but, even if I lived my whole life as a dick, it wasn't easy for me to talk back to someone who had died for me. What does it mean to have the same blood? I had never thought that having the same blood meant anything in my previous life. It was the same for my father and my sisters. I had just been unlucky to be born to the same father as them. Furthermore, I wasn't even born from the same womb as them. My mother who gave birth to me was different from their mother. And as if to make it all worse, the girl who was the most talented sword wielder in Gu clan's history, and on the other hand, the most pathetic young lord in all of Gu clan's history. Such a comparison destroyed me. I couldn't blame this for all my sins, but I couldn't say that it didn't play a large part in them. That's what made self. Pride so scary and selfish, and also pathetic. I had always thought of Gu Huibi as a monster who wanted to kill me when I was young. Why was she so obsessed with me? At that time, I had thought that it was because I was easily able to take the spot of the successor while Gu Huibi couldn't. How vile. Why would I ever think that Gu Huibi wanted the spot of the successor when I didn't know that I was walking into hell with my own feet? I stood straight, facing Gu Huibi in the training ground while she pointed her wooden sword towards me. The training ground was dark because it was late at night, but that wasn't a problem for the blood descendants of the Gu clan. Blaze. Gu Huibi slowly enveloped herself in red chi. A feat only possible after one had achieved the fifth realm of the destructive flame arts. It wasn't just a process of holding and producing heat, 
but rather harmonizing that process with her own qi which then led to its change in appearance. Its appearance resembled a flame that ignited. Fear not the dark, as the martial artist of Gu, they will shine in their own light. Those were the words left by the ancestors of the Gu clan. As if she was backing those words up, the flame that engulfed Gu Huibi even reached her wooden sword. Thanks to her overpoweringly excessive amount of qi, the whole training area was now lit up brightly. I observed Gu Huibi slowly and clearly. She didn't look too different from the visage I had of her in the memories of my previous life. The body of a martial artist aged slower than average humans. That was why when I looked at Gu Huibi, I was reminded of the tragic past. Her one arm that ceased to move because of how badly it had been trampled upon. And me, who had been gazing into those red eyes which had been losing light as she slowly slipped away into death's embrace. Did it rain back then as well? I just remember that the weather wasn't good. Little brother. Little brother. Both versions of Gu Huibi's voice could be heard. Is it because I am tired? It probably wasn't the case. It was most likely because I could never forget that moment. Time after time, if I could have just met Gu Huibi after my death. I'd always wanted to ask her one thing. What she said to me with a smile even when she was dying. I wanted to ask her. Why did she say those words to me? And why did she go that far for someone like me? Not that I would ever hear from her anyways. Are you not going to come at me? Please, be happy. I just wanted to ask. Nah, here I come. I stepped towards Gu Huibi. Chapter 46 Sword Phoenix, 6, you are listening at novelfull.audio Sword Phoenix, 6. You are bound to forget some of your memories especially if it's from a long time ago. That was just the way humans were, and even for Gu Huibi who was a talented martial artist, it wasn't much different. However, there was one thing that she couldn't forget, please, take good care of Yangchen. The warmest memory that Gu Huibi had. The memory that she would always think of whenever she went through tough times, served as both a remedy and a poison. To Gu Huibi, she was the kindest and most beautiful person of them all. She was the opposite of the wild son of the Gu clan. It honestly felt like she loved them more than her biological mother. The mother that let her son lie his head on her knees, the mother who never lost her smile no matter how much trouble her children caused. And the mother who worried about her children more than they bothered to get concerned about themselves when they got hurt. Mother. She totally deserved to be called by that title as she didn't lack anything. And now, the mother who looked over them not with power but with a kind heart was no longer there with them. Gu Huibi told herself that she would do anything to fulfill her mother's request to save Gu Yangchen. However, Gu Huibi failed to do so, as she was different from her kind mother. She put the effort in order to fulfill her request, but it was just impossible since her birth. So she had to look for a different way. Gu Huibi first thought that she needed strength, so she started to learn how to use a sword. Thankfully, she had great natural talent. She still had an aggressive personality because the Gu clan's blood still flowed in her veins at the end of the day. Which she kept even after her leaving the clan, however, Gu Huibi never forgot about what she learned. As long as there is love, it is possible to save the people you care about. Gu Huibi never forgot about what her mother had shown her. And Gu Huibi would continue to live with what she had learned from her mother. She would even live with this mindset till the end of her life. Little brother. I called my little brother. My younger brother seemed to grow a little ever since the last time I saw him. I was able to notice that he got skinnier as well, whereas before he would always look for sweets that made him look chubby. This was also the reason why I felt bad and brought him some dumplings. It made me happy though, seeing him enjoy the dumplings I brought him. Hey! I spoke with a voice that expressed no sign of love whatsoever. I smiled. To me, it looked as if a cat was showing its claws which just seemed cute in my eyes. 
It looked like my young brother had some lingering chi in his body which he probably got from his trip to Sichuan. And when I looked away for just one moment, he caused another trouble. No matter how much I scolded him, he never listened. How dare he make agree for another marriage arrangement? It was the same as when they decided the engagement with Peng Clan, something like this would only happen when I'm away from home. At this point, I kind of started to hold a bit of a grudge against my father who kept arranging these marriages for my brother without even letting me know. And it would always happen when I'm out for a business purpose, so is he doing it on purpose? But the most bizarre thing was, that he changed to a completely new person when I was only away for a few months. He was my little brother. There was no way I wouldn't recognize him. It's just that he now had that martial artist look to him. I mean, just look at him now. If something like this were to happen, my little brother would have already been hiding in a corner of his room, but he is showing no fear when I'm standing in front of him right now with an overpowering chi. He was instead looking for a chance. The chance that he could take in order for him to attack. How to describe this? How magnificent? Or does that make me look like a pervert? A duel against a strong fighter is always enjoyable. Because there was no backing down on either side. Which was why I never knew that I would feel something like this against my little brother. I would always worry about what to do with him when he never listened to me. But to see him change for the better in this short span of time, made me feel both proud and somewhat regretful that I wasn't there for it. If he still maintained his wild personality, I was going to consider bringing him to my swordsman group with force, but it looks like there is no need for that. Is this also because of that Namgum girl? Blaze. Because of my emotions getting to me, my chi went out of control for a brief moment. The military exhibition of Tang or something. Did they meet there? I thought that he would make a shitty excuse again and wouldn't go this year as well. I heard that the second elder did something that made him go. That's what I heard. Of course, it had to be the second elder who I can't even complain to. Sigh. Namgun girl huh? I wonder if she's pretty. I would assume just by looking at the lightning dragon, that she would look half decent at the very least. I would have preferred if I could just meet her in real life, but I couldn't even find a way for me to meet her whatever their clan is doing with her. The only thing that I was able to find about her. Was that she was the top beauty of Anhui. How useless of information this was. Sister. I stopped my trail of thoughts when my brother called. Gu Yangchen was already in his fighting stance. What's up? I just called you because it looked like you were thinking about something in the middle of a duel. Whoa, you are looking out for your sister in case she gets hurt. How kind of you. Gu Yangchen didn't respond and stretched his neck and body. Every time he stretched, the cracking sound of his bones could be heard. Although it only looked that way to me. And even though he was in his fighting stance, I couldn't feel the specific heat that came from the third realm of flame arcs. How come? Was he preparing something else? Or, maybe he was just nervous. Little brother, you're not going to use a sword. I don't use a sword anymore. I stopped for a moment upon hearing Gu Yangchen's words. He doesn't use a sword, he says. I saw him carry around a wooden sword a few months ago, so did he stop using them because he felt that it wasn't for him. But that would mean that Gu Yangchen had to have trained with a sword for a long time. So if he just stopped using a sword because he simply didn't like it. Shouldn't I scold him for that? Was my thought at first, but I erased it shortly after. I guess I'll let him be. I couldn't scold him for small things like that. Because I wasn't his mother or anything. Yeah, whatever. It's his choice anyways. I pointed my wooden sword towards Gu Yangchen and said. Little brother. Yes. Are you not going to come at me? Nah, I'm coming. I also went into my fighting stance at my brother's answer. I honestly wasn't going to be serious at all in this duel. I wanted to teach him a lesson because of the marriage agreement he made. But I didn't want to hurt someone who was already hurt. 
let's just take it easy, just enough for this to be a light spar. My main reason for doing this was to take out Gu Yangchen's lingering qi anyways. So I had to realize my main goal for this duel. It's been a while since I've dueled with my little brother. Unlike Gu Yanxiao who was obsessed with me, Gu Yangchen despised clashing swords with me. Which is why this was new to me. Go easy on him. I wanted to enjoy this as long as possible. If I accidentally put in too much strength then the duel would end right away. Which would also make me fail at my mission of taking his lingering chi out. I was well aware of how capable I was at fighting. I was always better than the rest of five dragons and three phoenixes which further made me realize how talented I was. You can argue that I was arrogant because of these thoughts I had. But I definitely had the talent to back it up. But that Peng Clan's crazy guy, that lunatic. No, he goes by the title Young Lord of Peng now. Unlike his crazy personality, his talent in martial arts was incomparable. Because he was different even when compared to the talented prodigies of the world. But even so, he wasn't completely out of reach. It won't take long. That was my judgment. Sister. I heard Gu Yangchen's voice again. I realized again, that I was thinking about something else. No matter who my opponent was, I shouldn't be making these kinds of mistakes. I was thinking of apologizing to him at first, but I felt something strange. Because Gu Yangchen's voice was much closer than before. Wah! Before I could even utter a word, my body reacted. My body instinctively acted on its own because of all the fighting I did with the demons for the past few months. I swung my wooden sword in the air. It released red chi which drew a half circle in the air, but there was no one there. Press. It wasn't from in front of me. I quickly tilted my body away from the sensation I felt from my flank. Pow. I barely dodged it. And as soon as I dodged it, I heard an explosion of chi where the punch landed. It all happened in an instant. I took a few steps back and looked at Gu Yangchen with shaky eyes. Where I was standing before, stood Gu Yangchen. The fist he lightly let loose had a red aura around it. Just barely. And because of me moving away from him, the area around Gu Yangchen became dark again. But then I was able to see Gu Yangchen's eyes from the dark. He had a slight crimson glint in his eyes. How? The red chi that formed around one's body. And the change in one's physique. It was all possible after reaching the same point I had reached. Then how? I asked the same question. I was able to see since we used the same martial art. That whatever he was using was indeed the destructive flame arts, but something was different about it. If I had to compare it to someone, it was similar to the lord of the clan. The way he was standing, the way he was staring at me, and the chi that formed around his body. I was able to see the tiger warrior in Gu Yangchen. I wasn't saying that because he was his son. It was just weird that I was able to see my father from Gu Yangchen who was only at the third realm when my father was about to reach the max rank of flame arts. After shaking off his hands, Gu Yangchen said. Sister. It felt pressuring. I never felt anything like this even against demons. It wasn't his chi that was pressuring me. It was just the way Gu Yangchen was that made me feel pressured. The greatest prodigy, me, the sword phoenix herself. How astounding this is. I wonder what happened for that child to change this much. I felt horrible for going away for those few months. Because I wasn't able to be there to witness his change. I was so disappointed in that. Gu Yangchen, while looking at me, spoke. Are you done letting your guard down? I know, right. How could I let my guard down? If Gu Yangchen didn't call my name. And if he aimed for my chin rather than my flank. Would I still be standing here fine? I wasn't sure of that. I forcefully hid my joy and asked Gu Yangchen, little brother, did something happen while I was gone? Yeah, a lot has happened. He answered with a rather sour face. 
I guess it wasn't all that pleasant for him. Oh no. This is bad. I slightly licked my lips. I loved the idea of my little brother accomplishing great things. I finally felt relieved that my brother who looked like he was going the wrong path, finally changed to a better path. Unrelated to that though, my martial artist instincts were telling me, to bring the enemy down to his knees. I couldn't forget about my main goal for this duel though, but I couldn't help but feel a little greedy. Just a little, it can't hurt right. Just a little, surely my brother can handle it right. The moment I decided as such. Blaze. I executed the idea right away. Is she finally back to her senses? I sighed to the heat that felt much hotter than before. I wonder what she was thinking about for so long. She just kept frowning, then smiling, then repeating them over and over again. It would have ended right away if I just aimed for her chin, but I was doing this to take out the lingering chi in my body anyways. That was probably Gu Huibi's intention as well, so I just gave her a warning attack. I just wanted to tell her something like, wake up, I'm at least strong enough to be a martial artist, but perhaps I went a bit far. Holy! How much of it was she hiding? I had to flinch at the heat that passed by me. I was certain. That the heat she put out right now wasn't the heat of a fifth realm flame arcs. It was at least higher than that. You're finally back to your senses, right sister? I asked somewhat nervously, but Gu Huibi smiled while being engulfed in flames. Yeah. I'm fine, I'm fine. It doesn't look like you're fine. I suddenly thought of a nickname for that woman who seemed to be not right in her head right now. Mad Flaming Sword Gu Huibi. To put it simply, I was just calling her a crazy woman that was in flames. No matter how I looked at it, it wasn't a nice way to call someone, though it fit her really well. Did I excite her too much? Thanks to me, reaching the third realm, it felt much easier to use my chi. And with that, I was successful in giving her a surprise attack. Though I regret it now. It looked like I excited that crazy fire boar a little too much. Now it was going to be hard to stop her. I'm coming, little brother. On second thought, I don't think you. Oh for fuck's sake. Without letting me finish, Gu Huibi charged towards me. And that night, my training ground was destroyed thanks to Gu Huibi's rampage. Meanwhile when Gu Yangchen's place was being destroyed. In the Lord's Room of the Namgung Clan. This. Lord Namgung Jin, was asking his escort while not being able to hide his trembling eyes. What is this? The escort who brought him the letter, couldn't say anything but kneel down. This happened because of my negligence. I apologize, my lord. Words of the escort didn't even reach the ears of the lord. What mattered the most was the letter that was in the lord's hand right now. Nangung Jin read the letter with shaky hands that his daughter left him. He read the short sentence she had left for him. It was hard for him to even understand the content, as no effort was put into this letter. But even then, Nangung Jin was certain that this letter was indeed left by her daughter. As it was only possible for her, to leave such an effortless letter and still walk around so prominently in the Namgung clan. You say you don't know when she disappeared? Yes, the escort answered Namgung Jin's question. To which Namgung Jin responded with a frown. The lord wondered if he should be proud that she managed to escape the sights of all the escorts in the clan. And he would have been very happy if it wasn't for the letter he read. Nangung Jin couldn't hold his anger till the end and crumpled the letter. Bring her back. The fierce voice echoed throughout the whole room. Because of the overpowering pressure, the escort couldn't even answer properly. He just instead tried his best to hold in his scream and nodded his head. In the crumpled letter that Namgung by Dot Ah left, I'm going away to see my fiancé. Were the words that were written. Basically. Nangung by Dot Ah just ran away from her home. Chapter 47 Mount Hua, 1, you are listening at novelfull.audio. Mount Hua, 1 
It had been one month since the Hao clan was given a request from the Gu clan and during that month, Daonun, Chu had experienced various events, significant and insignificant in nature. After Gu Yangchen left Hao clan, the first task Daonun, Chu had set about working on hadn't been the mission Gu Yangchen had given him, instead, it had been an effort to gather information on the Gu clan. This was done as he'd guessed that for Gu Yangchen to know about the Lord of Hao clan, it had to mean that he'd gotten the information from his clan. Daonun, Chu had to know. Did the Gu clan kidnap the Lord of Hao clan? If so, when was it done, and how did they manage it? And why had they sent Gu Yangchen to inform Hao clan about it? Alongside the information gathering focused on the Gu clan, Daonun, Chu also had to focus on Gu Yangchen's request. And while one month was too short for Daonun, Chu to complete it, she still had to try. Because if she didn't, she wouldn't have an answer for Gu Yangchen. And so, Daonun, Chu had first gone about gathering all the information she could find in relation to the Gu clan. Hao clan had secured themselves with walls surrounded by the Gu clan as they held valuable information whilst also having the ability to gather more. So Daonun, Chu had thought that as long as she put in the effort, even without using all her clan's power, information on the Gu clan would be readily accessible. However, in a surprising turn of events, no information aside from what was already known could be found about the Gu clan. Not even the four noble clans were so hard to investigate, so Daonun, Chu found it strange. It was as if someone was purposely stopping Hao clan from gathering information on them. Are they hiding the heavenly venerables in their clan or something? It was so odd that Daonun, Chu had momentarily entertained such an absurd thought. It was quite difficult for Daonun, Chu to succeed in her mission in only a month with the little information Gu Yangchen had left. The person he was looking for was at a rather far location, which only made it harder for them to gather information on him. Although Daonun, Chu had heard that her operatives were able to find something strange. Outside of that. However, there was too much information and questions to be found. But even then, Daonun, Chu still had to maintain her mask of calmness. To never let curiosity cause a change in her expression, as it was a big weakness to show an opponent signs of curiosity. That was the mindset Daonun, Chu had lived with throughout her life, and it was supposed to stay that way. However, for the second time since she had met Gu Yangchen, that mindset had been shattered. Because she couldn't help but feel curious about the sight before her. After hesitating for a while, she finally asked, Young Master Gu, may I please ask you a question? No, what happened to your eyes? Daonun, Chu pointed carefully at his left eye. Gu Yangchen's left eye which had previously been pristine, was now blue with a huge bruise on it. I told you not to ask. Gu Yangchen frowned the moment he heard the question. Did he really have to ask about this? I was already a bit pissed off as I had to come all the way here with my exhausted body. Sigh. I unconsciously released a sigh after hearing Daonun. Chu's question. The bruise was a scar I had received from my battle with the fire boar last night. That piece of. That crazy boar, I told her to calm down, but she wouldn't listen no matter how many times I said it. What made it scarier was the fact that Gu Huibi had been smiling throughout the duration of our duel. What had made her so excited that she'd charged at me like that? She'd said that she would help me get rid of my lingering chi, but halfway through the duel it just looked like she was having fun. In the end, I was thankfully able to burn out the lingering chi that was in my body thanks to Gu Huibi's duel, but I also got the bruise. Something happened. I see, when the duel finally ended, Gu Huibi seemed to realize that she had gone too far as her face was riddled with guilt when she was looking at me. What kind of person continues to attack with their elbow after missing an attack with their sword? Fortunately, she'd been lacking a bit of chi since she initially missed an attack. However, if she had hit me with full force my head would have exploded. I swear I'm never going to duel her again. In the middle of all of this, Daonun, Chu just kept looking at my bruise, seemingly concerned. Was he looking for a chance to attack me here? Daonun, Chu let out a fake cough on noticing my discomfort at his continual staring. 
Ahem, I heard that you had some business during your trip to Sichuan. Business. I paused momentarily at Chu's words, the cup of tea I'd been about to take a sip from suspended in motion. The only business I had in Sichuan was the secret vault and there was no way that he knew about, right? I heard that you beat the lightning dragon. Oh. I felt immediate relief on realizing what he was talking about. Thankfully, he didn't seem to know anything about the secret vault. I'd forgotten about half of what Daonun Chu asked me about, the incident with the lightning dragon was that insignificant to me. The story of Gu clan's son breaking the lightning dragon's arm in a duel, isn't this about you? I didn't break it. I just gave it a love tap. There were only so many people in the military exhibition of Tang, so who was spreading all these rumors? As long as there are eyes, there will definitely be mouths. Daonun Chu gave a response that made me feel like he'd read my mind. Then again, I had honestly expected the story to spread much quicker as it was about the lightning dragon getting humiliated. Surprisingly, it hadn't spread all that much. The Namgung clan is trying to stop the rumors so that they don't spread further. Yeah, that sounded like something they'd do. Although, for them to stop the rumors from spreading. They probably gave the beggars sect some gold coins. It was harder to stop rumors from spreading after they had already been exposed to the world than it was to spread rumors, and yet the Namgung clan had been successful in doing so. They must have used quite a bit of their gold coins in order to do so. It was even more shocking that Daonun, Chu didn't seem overly concerned about this story. So he's more surprised about the bruise on my eye than the fact that I beat the lightning dragon. What kind of bullshit is this? Anyways, how's my request going? Daonun, Chu took out a letter in response, as if he'd been waiting for me to ask him. I took the letter and opened it without hesitation. It was something I had been waiting one whole month for. What is this? But something was strange. I frowned after reading only a few lines. The short letter contained the information on the location of the child I was looking for, and apparently the child already gone to a different area with his grandfather during the time that I handed the request to Daonun Chu. That was simply absurd. It was absurd that the child had already left the area, and him leaving with his grandfather was another oddity. I'd heard that he was an orphan, but now I was seeing that he had a grandfather. Furthermore. You say that he has left the area. Yes, that was all we were able to find. A boy who looked to be ten years of age with half his hair being grey and was living in a unique mountainous region. No matter who looked at it, the boy was unique, so it would be hard for them to make a mistake. This meant, that either Hao Clan was lying to me, or the information I had on the boy wasn't accurate to begin with, or history had changed again. What a drag. If Hao Clan was lying to me though, I wonder why they would do that. If I had to look for a reason, it would probably be that they were looking for a way to gather more information they needed from me, or that they already had the boy kidnapped as they thought that the boy was someone significant to me. Both scenarios weren't really bad for me, however, because if any of them were true then it made it easier for me to accomplish my goal. But, if the information I had on the boy had been inaccurate to begin with, that really was problematic. If he lied to me even when he was in a situation like that. The information I knew about him had come directly from him after all. And if he'd lied to me even while he was in such a situation. The thought of it gave me goosebumps. Would he really lie to me even when he was taking his last breath? I couldn't be sure, as there was a slight possibility that he would actually be the type of person to lie even when about to die. He was a normal person without any chi that had gone against thousands of martial artists using nothing but his brain. Even then. Whatever the answer was, I couldn't do anything about it. I couldn't afford to go around looking for what the answer was. I would soon need to leave for Mount Hua. A lot of problems have popped up at once. Young master. What should I do about this? Young master. What? I was walking in the streets after leaving Hao clan. As I didn't have anything else to talk about with them, I told them that I'd be back in a few days. 
And as was the usual whenever I went out into the streets, I was going to buy some yagua. It had almost became a habit at this point. As I received a bunch of yagua from the store, I noticed how Muyan made a sad face behind me. I wondered why he was making that face. What's up? Why are you looking like that? I don't have money, young master. Muyan suddenly spat out those words. What is he on about though? Why does he automatically assume that he'll be the one paying for it? Because of this, I felt like kidding around with him for a bit. What? Why are you telling me that now? At my words, Muyin revealed an expression filled with despair as if he had just been waiting for that response. As soon as I saw his expressions, I took out some silver coins from my pocket and watched with amusement as Muyin swiftly went from despairing to shock. I spoke to him while laughing. Hey, it was just a joke. Did you really think you were going to pay for it? No. It's just. No. Then why were you acting like that? If you have money, then can I please have the money you borrowed from me a while back? Here is your yagua. Oh. My yagua is here, let's go back home now. I grabbed the yagua that came to me at the perfect timing and started walking back to my clan. It sounded like Muyin was calling me in a sorrowful tone. But I ignored him for now. I'm sorry. I swear I'll pay it back next time. The biggest change in Gu Yangchen's place would have to be all the wooden sculptures that were being added. The bland and boring place had been somewhat brightened up, in part thanks to Y. C. Old. Ah, and the Sword Emperor's hobby. So the second elder thought as he looked at the recently finished eagle sculpture. You said he left Anhui. Ask the Sword Emperor. The second elder carefully put down the wooden eagle sculpture so that he wouldn't break it. That's what I heard. Did something happen? The immortal healer was a man that acted like the wind. He never stayed in one location for a long time. And that person going to Anhui brought about a whole different meaning. Anhui was the Lord of Heaven, Jialchen's region, and he was looking for him. For the immortal healer to be in Anhui while Jialchen was in that region. The Sword Emperor had felt that bad things were looming on the horizon. But why? If Jialchen knew somehow that the Sword Emperor was looking for the immortal healer, then he would have never let him go. But somehow he already left Anhui. Do you know where he left to, Gu Ryan? The second elder started to think about the Sword Emperor's question. The reason why Second Elder had gone to Namgung was because of the Lord's request. It was for Gu Yangchen's marriage arrangement, as well as things related to the immortal healer. He'd been given a lot of work as a result of him sending Gu Yangchen to Sichuan, and he really felt like Gu Yangchen deserved a proper bonking the next time he saw him. The immortal healer was already gone by the time the Second Elder arrived in Anhui. Many said that they didn't know where he left to. But the second elder heard from some people that he was heading for the Shangxi Shangxi and Shangxi are adjacent states in China. Gu clan is from Shangxi and Mount Hua is from Shangxi. They have similar spelling but their pronunciation are different. Province Shangxi, is it Mount Hua? It was a familiar area. As it was also a place that Gu Yangchen was going to in a few days. What are you going to do? Dot, if needed, I will look for him myself. The Sword Emperor searching himself. To hear the man who had become a lowly servant just so he could hide from the public eye, say that he would search by himself. It meant that the Sword Emperor was really desperate. The Second Elder couldn't easily understand the Sword Emperor's situation. He asked what he was going to do, but the Sword Emperor didn't answer till the end. Then a few days later, the second elder found out that the names of Y. C. Old. Ah and the Sword Emperor were written on the paper that showed who would be leaving for Mount Hua. For a farmer, summer was hell. It was because most of the farm drying off which made them make less money, as well as them having to embrace the heat that came with the summer. One could argue that every season was the same. But summer was easily the hardest for a person that helped his mother with farm work. Mother. I don't think we can sell this one. 
I shouted disappointedly while throwing the dried crop on the ground. This dog's hit season. I wondered how long was left until this shitty season ended. Every year, I would sweat my ass off working, but nothing changed. It was at that moment that the seemingly endless sunlight was covered up by something. What the? In hopes of the clouds bestowing rain upon me, I gazed up at the sky. Unfortunately, it wasn't rain, but I was shocked when I saw the person casting their shadow upon me. Wah! I was so shocked that I fell on my butt and screamed. A girl who had azure white hair which shone in the sunlight, and who had white pale skin which looked like it would only form after living in darkness for eternity. It was the appearance of an angel that my father would always talk about when he was drunk. Hello, the girl spoke. Gods, even her voice was beautiful. I couldn't calm down my heart that was beating like crazy. Yi, yes, where do I need to go if I want to reach Shangxi here by dot ah is asking directions for Shangxi, where Gu clan resides, not Shangxi. Shangxi. Why Shangxi? Does the girl live in Shangxi? I, who wasn't in the right mind, thought about such a thing. But I was barely able to return to my senses. Why that you can reach Shangxi if you just head east, thank you. The girl seemed to be in a hurry because as soon as I told her that, she flew off. Sh, she flew off in the sky. I screamed with a shaky voice. What? What are you screaming for? M. Mother, it's an angel. You crazy child, you lost yourself when you got rejected by your previous love. No, I swear, look. No matter how much I tried to argue, she ignored me and focused on her work. I also had no evidence to back my words up. What is this? I suddenly noticed that there was a silver coin on the floor where the girl was previously standing. It was an amount of money sufficient for my whole family to feed for a few months. H. Holy, did the angel leave this behind for me? I swiftly put the coin in my pocket. However, there was one weird thing. The angel asked me where Shangxi was. And I told her that it was to the east. So why did the angel go west? I even pointed in the direction of it with my finger. I would never find out why even till the day I died. Chapter 48 Mount Hua, 2, you are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Mount Hua, 2. I felt like I needed to say something one more time. However, time never listened to me. Instead, I always found myself in situations where I had to adapt to its passing and whatever it brought. I was re-emphasizing that statement because the ten days I'd been given went by way too fast. In those days, I had to train with the little time I had, and I also had to squeeze out all the memories I had of the events that would happen in the future. Plus, I also had to deal with the second elder and Gu Huibi visiting me all the time. The only thing that gave me some form of entertainment was teasing why Seol Dada after she was done with all the housework. Seeing her face morph into despair as if the world was collapsing whenever I took and ate her yagwa would never not be funny. Plus, when you think about it, it's my money anyways, right? The servants would sometimes spend their own money to buy her snacks, but most of the snacks came from me. Well, to be more specific, it was the clan's money, but that's pretty much the same thing. It's my money until I'm out of the clan. I'd always had the thought of leaving the clan for good, but that's something for the future. I needed to take advantage if the clan for at least five more years. Thud. Thud. I let go of my sandbags after a session of training. Their weights could easily be discerned just by hearing the sounds they made as they fell onto the floor. Not yet, huh? Ten days was definitely not enough time for me to reach the fourth realm of the flame arts. I may have been at the peak of the third realm, but the final wall to jump over in order to get to the fourth realm was a bit tall. If I wanted to use this destructive art whilst also being fluid in my movements, I first needed to hone my physique. The Gu clan's destructive martial art may have been easy to learn, but the qi management required was tough to balance things out. The wild flame that formed around the martial artist's body consumed a ton of qi, 
and in order to withstand the flames, the user had to have a strong physique to begin with. Speaking from the experience of my previous life, I knew more than anyone just how important it was to have a strong physique. It's also why I couldn't reach the highest realm. The highest realm. The ultimate form of the destructive flame art. The realm that would allow the martial artist to claim they had mastered it. Some compared mastering the art to mastering one's own will. But I'd never reached that realm, so I didn't know the answer. The demon sword in my previous life reached the point where she became one with her sword. If we were speaking solely about realm, then I believe she reached a higher realm than I did. When I asked her how she felt after reaching such a realm, she replied. Nothing. I hadn't even been disappointed because I'd expected she wouldn't give me a detailed answer anyways. If I had to decipher that answer, it would be something along the lines of transcending to a new level. It was pretty difficult to explain. As one transcended to a new level, they became more accustomed to it, allowing them to perceive it more clearly. I was currently at a level so pathetic that I couldn't even feel such things, but if I was in the shoes of the martial artist that was right in front of me, it would be a completely different story. I am great at driving carriages, young master. No need, elder, we already called people to drive the carriage for us. So why was this man here living like this? I always wondered about that, asterisk 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 it had been ten days already. It didn't even feel like I'd had enough time to rest, but the day when I would be going to Mount Hua came regardless. Fuck sake. I still can't believe that I would be going to Shangxi when I just returned from Sichuan. I wondered how long the trip would take, it would probably be fall season by the time I came back home. How long do you think this trip is going to take? I would assume it'll take more than how much you think it's going to take. How could you say such a thing, are you still mad at me? Because of me teasing Muyin with the silver coin last time, it looked like he was still in a bad mood. Well. I also never paid him back. Oh, maybe that's why he's mad. I was going to pay him back after I got my pay for this trip. Putting aside Muyin, I took a look at the carriage that was being prepared for our trip. A lot of things were being moved into the carriage. And compared to when I went to Sichuan, it looked like more resources were being carried. I assumed that I was getting better treatment as this was a carriage sent by the Lord himself. In the middle of that, I noticed why Seol Da who could barely walk forward as she was carrying huge things that blocked her vision. She was moving heavy things that even grown dot up males struggled with. Maybe she already possesses some chi in her. I had no other explanation for her monstrous strength. Nay. My eyes automatically looked in the direction of the horse sound. Why see old Dada carrying all that was one thing, but the sword emperor chatting with the horse, how am I supposed to feel about this situation? How did they end up coming with me? When I first heard that the sword emperor and why see old Dada were coming along on my trip, I was very shocked. Furthermore, the Sword Emperor insisted that he was going to be the one driving the horse. I thought that we already had a person for that job, but when I asked about it I was told that they had gone on vacation after getting paid silver coins from our Sichuan trip. Now of all times. When it is the time for me to go to Mount Hua. I smell something fishy. I felt like the Lord did something fishy in order for this to happen. And in the middle of all those fishy things, was me who was walking into the storm. Was this really all right? Little brother. It was Gu Huibi's voice. When I looked in the direction of the voice, Gu Huibi was holding a familiar dish of dumplings. Why are you holding that? Little brother, I heard you skipped your meal again. Uh. I did eat, but only a little. Little brother, are you crazy? How could you miss out on your meal when you're in your growing phase? As you can see, I'm just fi. Oof. Without letting me finish, Gu Huibi forcefully shoved a dumpling into my mouth. As much as I wanted to spit it out, I couldn't do that to a precious dumpling. I barely gulped it down and drank the water she handed me afterwards. Gu Huibi looked happy and satisfied after watching me gulp down the dumpling she gave me. 
which in turn made me dissatisfied. Sister, when are you going to leave? Why? Do you want me to stay longer? No, I want you to get out of here Alra. Whoa. I dodged the punch that quickly flew at me. This crazy woman is now choosing violence over words first. Hey. Let's talk with words, please. I knew that you were gonna dodge it anyways. I swear the way you speak to me. When she shook off her hands, a bit of red chi also came out. Wow, so she even infused chi into that punch. Putting aside the shocking thing she just did, Gu Huibi spoke with a smile. I think I'll be leaving the clan in ten days. Ten days huh, so that means that she would be here for a total of twenty days, that was a very long time for the swordsman to be off dot duty. Was it because they had just finished a long mission? It seemed like their last mission was especially hard considering that the fifth swordsman squad was always assigned long dot term missions. Once you're done resting, where are you headed to after? Whoa, what is this? Are you worrying about me? How annoying, I should have just stayed quiet. Gu Huibi chuckled, finding my reaction funny. It's a bit disappointing though, being able to see you for only this long. Gu Huibi ruffled my hair with her hand. My head bobbled around every time Gu Huibi moved her hand. It reminded me of the second elder. It was unfortunate, the fact that she resembled him. The next mission will take longer than usual. I was assigned to the Abyss. The Abyss. The Abyss was an area where numerous gates of demons would appear. It was also an area that was directly overseen by the Muram Alliance, and it was agreed upon within the Orthodox faction that the clans would take turns sending their troops to that area. It seemed like it was now the Gu clan's turn. It'll be a long trip for you. Wouldn't it be fun? I heard that many demons appear there. I already feel excited. I hope you enjoy your time there. I was worried for nothing. She was excited about that. The mad flaming sword. She was truly crazy. While we were having a conversation, Muyin came towards me and said, Young master, we are ready to leave. Are we going right now? Not right now, but in about 5 to 15 minutes. Lord Second Elder said he had something to give you, I wonder what it's going to be this time. Anything related to the Second Elder made me nervous. It wouldn't be weird for him to say something like, give this to the Lord of the Clan, to me. Give this to the Lord of the Clan. I didn't expect him to actually say it. What did you say? I asked again, however, just in case I'd heard him wrong, as the Second Elder had spoken those words to me out of nowhere after appearing. The second elder responded as if it wasn't significant. Hmm. Oh, just give this to that do, Hua bastard. No. Wait wait, I wasn't asking for the nickname you gave to the lord of their clan. Ha, huh, then what were you asking for? This crazy man, did he just call the lord of the mount Hua a bastard? How can he be so fearless? Anyways, they will let you meet him if you mention my name, so give this to him. What is this anyways? It's nothing. I was supposed to give this to him a while ago, but this old man forgot. The thing the second elder handed me was something that was wrapped loosely with a piece of cloth, so I guess it really wasn't anything important. I felt pretty good while touching it, so I kept fidgeting it with it, and the second elder spoke shortly after. It's called the Great Plum Blossom Stone, one of the four treasures of Mount Hua. I stopped fidgeting with the stone the moment I heard the second elder's words. Furthermore, I heard Muyin hiccup next to me. What did he just say? Surely this time I must have heard him wrong, right? Advance. Chapter. Available on sisl.mlustrden. On r.iskr. .iskr.gg slash sisl. Chapter 49. Mount Hua, 3. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Mount Hua, 3. I stood, dumbfounded, after hearing the shocking identity of the wrapped stone I had been tasked with delivering. 
The second elder felt awkward after seeing our reactions, so he continued with a noticeably subdued voice, much unlike the vigorous tone he usually used. Uh, I got it from winning a bet while we were drinking, but I forgot to give it back to him, you used one of the clan's four treasures as bet. What kind of nonsense is this? It would have been more believable if he just said that he stole it, but this. What kind of lord uses his clan's treasure in a drinking bet? The second elder continued speaking. Don't be too sad, this old man also bet something that rivaled that stone he bet. Sad. What do you mean sad? Ha. Huh. I thought you were sad because you thought this old man didn't bet anything when the opposing side bet one of his clan's four treasures. What the hell are you going on about? And did he say he bet something that rivaled this stone? The second elder had such an item. At that point, I came to the conclusion that the second elder was just pulling my legs. Yeah, there's no way that this is really their clan's treasure. I smirked after assuring myself that the second elder was just playing with me. Hey, even if I look dumb to you, isn't your joke a bit too much? I unwrapped the cloth, not believing the second elder's words and intending to put an end to the joke. And instantly, the smell of plums spread everywhere. It was a soft scent. When I looked down at the unwrapped item in my grasp, I saw a round, shining stone. I rewrapped the stone right away. Fuck. No matter how I look at it, this is the real deal. If the stone shining and producing the scent of plums wasn't a treasure, then I didn't know what was. How could you wrap this kind of treasure in some cheap cloth? Hey. The lord of their clan gave it to me that way. So what are you yelling at this old man for? What kind of person wraps this kind of treasure in some cheap cloth like this? I felt like I was going insane. How was I supposed to deal with this? I was now in a situation where I had to get to Mount Hua whilst bringing this treasure with me. I'd never imagined receiving one of Mount Hua's treasures from a member of the Gu clan. Why are you making me deliver this anyways? you should just take the safer option of making the delivery group deliver it for you. There is no safer option such as right now, so don't worry. Ha! Huh. I thought about his words for a second, wondering what they meant. Then I remembered the sword emperor who was talking to a horse behind me. If the second elder and my father knew about the real identity of the sword emperor, then his words were understandable. Still, why are you making carry this? I thought my heart had stopped when I first saw the stone. While I was holding the treasure with shaky hands, the second elder spoke with a smile. Oh, I already spoke with their clan's lord, so you just need to go there without worrying about anything. So everything has been planned out already without my consent, why was I always made to do things without having any say in their proceedings? I felt like I wasn't being treated properly at the moment, even as I was the clan's only son. Then again, I have never really been treated well. Since everything had already been planned, I had no option of rejecting the request. I carefully put the stone in my pocket, as much as I wanted to, I couldn't just ask the sword emperor to hold it for me thankfully, the stone was pretty small, so it wasn't really noticeable. After I put the stone in my pocket, Nguyen spoke to me. Young master, we are now ready to go. I'll be there right away. As I turned to head towards the carriage, the second elder stopped me. Just like when you went to Sichuan. Yes, I'll come back without causing any trouble. You say that but you came back after breaking the lightning dragon's arm. Ahem. Anyways, where is my sister? Gu Huibi, who had been next to me not too long ago, had suddenly disappeared. When I asked that question, the second elder laughed. She's probably crying somewhere since she can't see you anymore. What? She's probably crying behind some tree since she can't see you because she's going far away this time, so don't worry about it. I faked a laugh at the second elder's absurd words. This was even harder to believe than the fact that the stone I was holding was one of the four great treasures of the clan. That fiery woman was crying because she is worried about me. Yeah right. It was more believable that she would tease me now that she was assigned to somewhere really far. 
The thought of Gu Huibi crying made me laugh a little. It really didn't fit her at all. Yeah, anyways, I'll be back. I had to leave soon, so I went inside the carriage after respectfully bidding my farewell to the second elder. Yeah, have a nice trip. Yes Lord Second Elder, take care. Nay. As soon as I got on the carriage, I heard the neigh of the horse, and the carriage started moving, signifying the start of our journey to Mount Hua. After Gu Yangchen left, the Second Elder went into his house and felt something in the corner of the room. Sigh. The Second Elder let out a sigh unnatural for his personality. Were you that sad? The person curled up in the corner flinched upon hearing the second elder's question. It's not like Yangchen is some three-that-year-old kid, so why are you crying like that? He, is still a fragile little kid. He's even skipping his meals because of his training, the sobbing voice belonged to none other than Gu Huibi. If you only take care of Yangchen, Yansio will be sad. Yansio takes care of herself well, but Yangchen always causes troubles wherever he goes. The second elder couldn't say anything in response to that point. Even this time, he returned from the Sichuan trip after breaking the arm of Namgung clan's heir. The second elder had wanted Gu Yangchen to break his leg as well after hearing everything that happened, but he had to compose himself as an elder. I barely got to see him too, the second elder turned away from Gu Huibi who continued to cry. She may have been called the Sword Phoenix, but to the second elder, she was just a granddaughter who still hadn't matured yet. The second elder, after watching for a bit, left the room and quietly closed the door. And after about seven days, someone walked towards the Gu clan's gate and knocked on it. Three days before Gu Huibi left for her mission. She was in an extremely bad mood due to a certain incident. And it only became worse because of the person that appeared in front of her. And who are you again? She spoke without any formality. It was right to show respect whether the person being spoken to was younger or older, but Gu Huibi was someone who didn't care about things like that, even if it made her seem disrespectful. The person before her seemed unaffected by Gu Huibi's disrespectful way of speaking and simply bowed her head, showing respect. I am Namgung by Dot Ah. She's absurdly pretty. That was the first thought Gu Huibi had when she saw Namgung by Dot Ah for the first time. The servant her brother would always bring alongside him was already absurdly pretty, yet this Namgung girl rivaled her. The greatest beauty of Anhui. She really lived up to that name. How annoying. Yeah, I heard that, but why did you come here? Gu Huibi didn't know why, but she noticed that the clothes Namgung by Dot Ah wore were covered in leaves and dust. Had she gone through some rough road or something? She even seemed to have some demon's blood on her clothes as well, as if she'd fought some demons on her way here. Namgung by Dot Ah responded firmly to Gu Huibi's question. I came here to see my fiancé. Fiancé, she wasn't wrong, but it really irritated Gu Huibi. I heard that it's not completely official yet. Oh, was it not official? The expression on Namgung by Dot Ah's face seemed to be asking that question. Unlike her cold brother, Gu Huibi felt like her brother's fiancé seemed to be a bit empty-headed. I don't like her. But she had something to say to Namgung by Dot Ah that brightened her mood. Of course, this wasn't something she had fancied a few days back, but back then she'd had no idea that it would come back to help her. She spoke to Namgung by Dot Ah. Ah that's unfortunate, my little brother isn't in the clan right now. Little brother. Yeah, little bro. I'm his older sister. Oh. Namgung by Dada nodded her head as if she'd just understood. Hello. Then she modestly bowed her head, showing respect. To that sudden action, Gu Huibi felt startled. What the hell? She then responded with a reluctant expression. Uh, yeah. Hello. Then. Where is he right now? He went to Mount Hua. Far, right. Unfortunate for you, so you should just go back home. Mount Hua. Gu Huibi was forced to halt her words in the middle of her cold response. 
It was because Nam Gung by Dot Ah had brightly smiled upon hearing about Gu Yangchen's location. It hurt Gu Huibi's pride to admit it, but her smiling face made her look almost too beautiful. Nam Gung by Dot Ah who was about to turn around stopped and asked her. It was a really random question. Are you a sword wielder? Yeah, did your younger brother not tell you? Nam Gung by Dot Ah tilted her head at Gu Huibi's question. Little brother. She'd never heard of such a thing from him. Nam Gung Chanjin never made an effort to talk about people that were stronger than him. And that meant that the woman in front of me was stronger than him. She was extremely strong, Nam Gung by Dot Ah could tell just by looking. She is probably even stronger than me. The explosive but fluid aura around her was telling Nam Gung by Dot Ah that. It was similar to her fiancé, but much stronger. It excited her. Nam Gung by Dada felt an urge to fight her slowly rise. Furthermore, she is a sword wielder. The woman in front of Nam Gung by Dot Ah was the perfect martial artist she was looking for. It made Nam Gung by Dot Ah want to stick to her for even a few days just so she could agree to have a duel with her. However, unfortunately, now is not the time. What? Thank you for telling me. Nam Gung by Dada bowed her head once again. Uh, yeah. Gu Huibi felt like her mind was going numb because of the Nam Gung girl's polite attitude. But she swiftly returned to her senses and spoke to her. Like I said, my little brother isn't here in the clan right now. So go back to your own. What the? Suddenly realizing that Nam Gung by Dot Ah was no longer before her, Gu Huibi cut herself off in surprise. What the, where did she go? Gu Huibi stood there in a daze for a while, feeling like she had just seen a ghost. The next day. A letter from the Nam Gung clan came, asking the Gu clan to get a hold of Nam Gung by Dot Ah if they happened to see her. But, it was already too late. 